and good evening everyone and welcome to Jimmy John's Field for some Friday Night Baseball right here on the USPBL Network as it's Macomb County Police Officer Night presented by Jim Causey Buick GMC as well as Meet the Unicorns Night. This is Brady Beaton, I'm Alex Johnson giving a call for tonight's game as the Unicorns take on the Mammoths for some Friday Night Baseball here on the USPBL Network and Brady, the Mammoths coming off a tough game last mm -hmm. night against the Beavers have lost their last three straight after winning three in a row yep. how do they look to get back on track here tonight well they've been a very streaky team and they and manager Taylor Jelenkowski jumbled up the lineup a little bit tried to get everything to gel and it did for the first few innings they took a 5-1 lead and it's almost like they took a deep breath and went whoo all right the job was done bad news for them was there was about five more innings to be played and the Beavers didn't just relinquished that game. They came back, they fought back, had a big eighth inning, and eventually got the win. So they need to have a short memory, need to be ready to snap back out of it and try to get what they had in the first four innings for the whole nine tonight. Yeah, I talked with Coach Justin Carr and some of the other players about that game, that five-run eighth inning that took away from them. But, you know, they say, hey, you got to move on from it. You can't yep. change it. You got to move on to the next game. And another chance here tonight as well as Sunday against the Unicorns. And they have the bats to do it. Burl Dixon hit an absolute bomb to right center field. Uh, Priamo Lozada had a, a nice at-bat where he didn't get rewarded. And I think that's something that they need to keep in mind. Be, trust the process. Be process-based. Don't be results based and when they were going with the process doing things right they weren't always getting the results if you keep doing things right you'll eventually get the balls to fall your way yeah absolutely we'll see how the mammoths are able to bounce back here tonight looking on the unicorn side you know they coming in uh, last saturday sweeping the beavers and mm -hmm. then getting a huge win on wednesday afternoon a 3-2 victory against the hoppers they're five and two on the season i talked to coach jim essian earlier today and he said things are doing really good right now the offense everything on, is going well on all cylinders and it's been doing really good here at the start of the season for them can't ask for much more than a five and two start especially in baseball they've been pitching pretty well they've been hitting pretty well also just got to keep everything going what the old saying ain't broke don't fix it keep doing what you've been doing just be steady, Eddie, never too high, never too low, but just keep attacking the day like you have been. Yeah, they're going to be looking to do so again here tonight against the Mammoths coming in 3-6, and six, hungry for a victory. We'll mm -hmm. see how this team turns out. Let's look at the pitching matchup now heading into tonight, Brady, and yep. take a look at for the Mammoths tonight. Alex Manas is making his second start on the season. We saw him on Sunday against the Hopper, started out strong. They got into a little bit of trouble, and then it just kind of went away from the Mammoths that day. He's looking to bounce back here tonight. Well, he got into a whole lot of trouble after the first six batters, and that's something that he's going to need to do is go late into this game. Mammoths have a busy weekend. They had to use a lot of pitchers last night. If Manassa can give Taylor Jelenkowski four or five innings, even six if he's really rolling, that would make a big difference. Not a big strain on the bullpen tonight. Have to attack hitters, fill up the strike zone. That's something we saw with the Mammoths the last two times. Remember last Sunday, they walked everybody, and it was a brutal 20-2 to two game that they lost. And then last night, they were doing all right, and then they started to get a little wild. Needed need to attack the strike zone, more first pitch strikes, higher strike thrown percentage as well. Yeah, pitching strength is gonna be healthiness is gonna be really crucial for the Mambas. Now, like you said, they're playing a lot of games over the span of the next few days. So we'll see about that. And looking on the unicorn side, it's gonna be Connor Tomasic for the Unicorns from Michigan State. He's coming and making his fourth appearance on the season, third start. He's looking to stay undefeated and is after doing really well on Wednesday against last last Thursday rather against the Hoppers. Yeah, he's gonna be very well rested, ready to go against the lineup that I wanna see how they respond, but Tomasic he can dictate a lot of this as well. You know, sometimes you get so one-sided focused on a narrative, you're going, oh, well, the Mammoths need to do X, Y, and Z. If Connor Tomaskett is on his game, he's picking the corners, he's throwing strikes, that's why sometimes those other teams struggle. It's a two-sided coin, and Tomasic is going to be the other side tonight, trying to allow his offense to do what they do, hit pretty well. Yeah, Coach Essen says he's doing really confident right now, and that's why he's rolling with him here tonight. 
We're going to see how he does after having a week off and getting back yep. into the swing of things here tonight. Yeah, eight-day rest, so you know his arm should be feeling pretty solid, ready to go in and try to extend the game a little bit. Now we're getting later into the season where guys are starting to warm up. We might see four, five, six inning starts from pitchers. Yeah, before we wrap up here, Brady, what are some of your keys of the game here looking at tonight? And I think a lot of it is stuff we already talked about for the Mammoths. Hey, get rid of last night. Get rid of the last two. You, you've got to find that way to win. If you get up on a team, keep attacking. Don't rest on your laurels. Don't think, hey, we've got it done. We already got the lead. Now let's just coast to the finish line. Keep attacking for the Unicorns. Just keep doing what you're doing. Attack the lineup, especially the bottom of the Mammoth Order. Have struggled a little bit. Tomasic, throw strikes. Trust your defense behind you. And looking forward to see what happens here tonight when we come back. First pitch is coming up right after this, right here on the USPBL Network. Don't go anywhere. you can rely on in this world, like your dog being happy to see you, coffee getting you through the day, and the government changing business regulations. And when it comes to navigating those regulations, you can rely on Tryon and its team of attorneys. Tryon can also tackle time-consuming HR tasks like payroll and employee benefits, so you can stay focused on growing your business. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. And good evening, everyone, and welcome to Jimmy John's Field for some Friday Night Baseball right here on the U.S. PBL Network. Tonight we got the Unikill Unicorns and the West Side Woolly Mammoths here on this Friday night for Meet the Unicorns Night and Macomb County Police Officer Appreciation Night presented by Jim Cosley Buick, GMC. I'm Alex Johnson, along with my partner here this evening. Brady Beaton's going to be a good one here tonight. Let's take a moment to recognize our sponsors who make this broadcast possible. Ascension, Belfour Property Restoration, Budweiser, Dave & Busters, DTE Energy, Fifth Third Bank, Jarbcom, Jimmy Johns, Macomb Community College, McLaren Macomb, McQuaid Heating and Cooling Plumbing and Refrigeration, Metro Detroit Chevy Dealers, Pepsi, Scott's, and United Wholesale Mortgage. Let's get ready for a good one here tonight. Let's take a look at our starting lineups here in this evening's contest. We'll take a look for the visiting Mammoths here tonight. Starting out at left field to lead it off will be Ward Hacklin. Then at center field batting second, Burl Dixon. He had a great night last night going for two for three with a homer and an RBI. A couple, few RBIs in the game last night. Francis Florentino, always a dangerous hitter to look out for. He's in the three spot. Nick and right field, Nick Webb over at first batting cleanup. Ducky Hewitt is the DH in this game batting fifth. Alex Steinbach over at third base in the hot corner. He's in the sixth spot. Then running out the lineup is Reese Chahi at, at second base. Zach Beetle behind the dish. And Denver Blinn over at short. And, and on the mound for the Woolly Mammoths is Alex Manassa making his second start on this season. Now we're going to take a look at the Utica Unicorns. Coming in at 5-2 and two on the year. Let's see what their batting order here tonight. As Josh Baker in left field will lead it off. Then it'll be followed by Donovan Curiel over at short. Lucas Gooden, who's making another appearance here tonight. He'll be over at first base batting third. In the cleanup spot for Utica is the right fielder Nick Pastor. Alec Brunson, the DH, bats fifth. 
Cam Norgren over at second bat six. James Moses over in center field. It's been a good, good player so far coming in for the Unicorns batting seventh. Justin Gomez is behind the plate in the eighth spot. And rounding out the lineup is third baseman Patrick Baggett. And then on the mound for the Unicorns is a right-handed pitcher, Connor Tomasic, here tonight. So it's going to be a good one here in store. We'll take a look at our pitcher comparison sponsored by Ascension. As we take a look at the pitchers here tonight, Alex Manasa making his second appearance on the season. Yeah, like we mentioned in the pre-game show, um, pre-game show Brady, they had a good start trying to bounce back here tonight. As we look at him here, he had allowed six hits and three innings of work, had three strikeouts on Sunday, trying to bounce back here tonight. Yeah, he had a good first couple of innings, and then it unraveled, and when it unraveled, it unraveled pretty quickly. And well, the Mammoths are just trying to get it all to gel, just haven't found it yet. While the Unicorns, starting off the season 5-2, and two, they've done great. Connor Tomasic, a big reason for that. The ERA early in the season, nothing that jumps off the page, but when you've been hitting like the Unicorns have, hey, pitching like that gives your team a chance. Yeah. Also heck of a mustache for Connor Tomasic. Yeah, going to be interesting here tonight for both of these pitchers. See how they bounce back here as this is going to be a good one here in store as the Unicorns and their starting lineup is going to be introduced on the field. But what are you looking for here tonight, Brady? Well, I'm looking for the Mammoths uh, if they – Get out fast, just keep going fast. It seems like they sprint out of the gates and then they struggle to get past the finish line or even get to the finish line. And for the Unicorns, hey, they have a lot of a lot of good players. Josh Baker, one of them, Nick Pastor, he's made some uh, nice plays out in the outfield. The bats have been solid. Need a good outing on the mound from Manasseh if you're the Mammoths. And again, the Unicorns, hey, just keep doing what you're doing. Hit the ball hard, pitch well, make the plays behind you, and don't give the other team extra opportunities. That's something that have plagued the Mammoths a bit at times. Yeah, that's been something that's been plaguing the Mammoths. You no, know, the early leads, you no, know, that's something that we talked with Coach Shelikowski on the field before the game is he's like the good starts, but how can you finish? It's a full nine innings, you know, you got to play a complete game if you want to win in this league. Absolutely, and baseball is a very fickle game. It can be whether it's month to month, week to week, game to game, heck, inning to inning. You can get a different feel about how your team's doing, how you're doing as an individual player. And I think the Mammoths personify that better than anyone. Started off 0 and 3, roared back to 500, win a three game winning streak. Haven't found the W since, and, well, they're going to face the, the first-place team in the Unicorns again. Just seven games in the season. If you go 5-2 and two in the middle of July and you've been struggling, no one really remembers, but you do it to start the season. You got us up in the booth going, ooh, the Unicorns are starting off hot. But I think the Mammoths really need this one. I want to see a little bit of, a, of an edge to them. Not quite a desperation, but play with your backs against the wall a little bit. End this losing streak before it gets worse because it is – your weekend's not over. Still got a couple more to go. Yeah, we'll see if the Mammoths are able to get back on track and build another winning streak and cool off the top place team in the Unicorns here in the early part of the season. We're going to step aside and we'll be back for the first pitch right here on the USP Bell Network. Don't go anywhere. Jimmy John's Field is the perfect venue for birthday parties, 
summer picnics, company outings, and provides the best entertainment in Metro Detroit with great baseball all summer long. Spend your summer nights under the lights at Jimmy John's Field in historic downtown Utica. about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself Copperfields! Jimmy John's, five bucks off orders of 20 or more. One thing that makes Detroit Mercy unique and different from other universities is that the faculty truly care about you and they're always there to help. Whether it's asking questions after class or going into the office hours, they're always there to lend a hand and really make you feel at home. People are here to work together and whether like you have a question or you're discussing topics within the class, you can go up to your professor and they know your name. They're just willing to help you become a better overall student. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. Throughout your life, from big moments to ones well-earned, we're your financial guardian angel. Alliance Catholic Credit Union. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Jimmy John's Field. Getting ready to get under, going underway in just a couple of minutes. It's the Unicorns and the Mammoths facing off here tonight. On this Friday night here in downtown Unico, Michigan, a gorgeous night for baseball. Here on Meet the Unicorns Night and Macomb County Police Officers Appreciation Night presented by Jim Cosley Buick GMC. Alex Johnson here with Brady Beaton on the call here this evening. Got a great one in store. We're going to take a look at our defensive alignment, our three-dimensional defensive alignment here tonight as the Unicorns take the field and get it ready. Brady, take it away. Yeah, the unicorns look like this from left to right in the outfield. Josh Baker, James Moses, Nick Pastor, and then in the infield, shortstop man by Donovan Curiel, Patrick Baggett at the hot corner at third base, Cam Norgren at second with Lucas Gooden at first, and receiving for Connor Tomasic tonight, Justin Gomez. And while the unicorns, well, they've been, they just play a very solid brand of baseball. They're looking to improve their early season record against a struggling Mammoths team. Yeah, we mentioned coming in, losing three straight, three tough ones for the Mammoths. They're trying to get back at those winning things. Oh, they started off the season 0-3, then they won three in a row, then they lost their last three. So it's been an up-and-down roller coaster for the Mammoths. But for the Unicorns, well, a team coming in, you know, they were in first place last season, lost a lot of players. So basically, almost a whole new team for the Unicorns this season. But they're coming out really strong at 5-2, and two, even though it's early. But Coach Jim Essien has got to be really proud of that. It's always better to get off to a good start than not. And let's see how they respond here on a weekend where and they've had a day off. The, the Mammoths played last night. Did not go their way. Started off well. Mammoths have started off game strong. The game they gave up 20 runs. They were actually in the lead, one to nothing in the game, and then they weren't. Now if they get the lead, look for them to try and 
hold the lead. It's it's always good to get the lead, but the important part is holding the lead. Yeah, that's the key thing for the Mammoths here tonight. You know, we mentioned about it. Even in a game that was 20-2 to 2 on Sunday, they had the lead for a brief moment, but you got to play a full nine innings to take to win here tonight, and that's something coaches Taylor Delikowski and manager Justin Karn we're looking for here tonight. You just got to shake it off. You got to move on. You know, we had some tough games down the stretch, but hey, it's a new day. We got to start off on the right foot and just keep going. Beautiful day for some baseball. We're just waiting for the rest of the myriad of people that were on the field to clear their way into safety. Everyone waited with bated breath in anticipation for that first pitch. Yeah, we had the national anthem performed by the Stony Creek High School Marching Band. Now they're all we're finishing off, walking off the field. Taking a look at the game time temperature here tonight. It's partly cloudy and 77 degrees. That's about as perfect of weather as you can ask for. Little breeze, not too much. Center field flag lay limp, but just a little breeze. It's a, about an ideal of a night as you could ask for. Yeah, we're still dealing with some air quality we've been dealing with the last few days. Um, that was but an issue about the entire northeast part of the United States. You know, with well, the we've been pretty lucky. Oh, I think it was Wednesday this week. It was a little hazy. It wasn't too bad. Nothing like New York or Philadelphia or anything that part of the country. We've noticed a little bit of the effects, but we've been fairly lucky in that regard. It, it's never looked yellow outside like it has in those cities. Yeah, we've been very fortunate. That is, Tomasic is down 2-0 to start. That gets a ground ball off of Hacklett to Curiel. He throws it over. Over the first base for the first out of the ball game. Hacklin did a good job out of the leadoff spot a night ago. Took a 2-0 pitch, just hit it off the handle. Like to see him repeat what he did last night. He was almost challenged a little bit hey going to the leadoff spot let's see what you can give us from this new lineup and he produced last night first at bat had the count he wanted looked like he had the pitch he wanted just didn't do a whole lot with it and Burl Dixon coming in he had an impressive day last night he had that home run coming in 360 on the season very smart ball player as well as his uh, his physical ability. I mean, his home run last night almost went onto the sound stage in right center field, but he's shown a baseball IQ both at the plate and in the field, and that's what you like to see from some of your better athletes on the ball diamond. Yeah, I'm talking with him last night. It's that one, his sky and foul. He got that hating curveball and able to send it out to right center field, and he was happy that one went out of here. He enjoyed it. He admired it for a few seconds. Just wants the team to get back on track. And, you no, know, we talked talk to him about how they can recover from that. You know, allowing five runs in the bottom of the eighth against the Beavers last night. And it was just communication that was not on par. And you just got to be able to make those adjustments, you know, just making sure what's going on so you don't make those mistakes late in the ball game. Well, they were hitting well all day long, and a walk certainly helps the cause. Get on base, and he's always a threat to swipe a bag. And especially when you have this guy coming up, Francis Florentino, he has been probably the most impressive batter out the gate here in the U.S. PBL. Yeah, with that 406 average, it was down. He was over 500, then it's kind of cooled off. But he's still a very talented player to, to watch. And looking at by his numbers, you see 13 hits on the season already. A piece of that one goes. He's an aggressive play. hitter. It doesn't matter what the count is. He will jump all over a first pitch. He can work a long at bat. But if you make a mistake, Florentino, at least in here in the first few weeks, has shown a propensity to make pitchers pay for mistakes. Oh, an offering that one upstairs at 86 miles an hour. From Tomasic. He's just trying to stay composed. After that one-out walk, 74, just missed the outside corner at 2-1-1. Two one. 
It's going to show you a four-seam fastball, a slider, a changeup, a cutter, and a curve. As he gets that one at 85 to go his way, two and two. Two and two, throw something low, something off speed that only Florentino can only hit hard into the ground. See if he can get a two ball and get out of this inning quickly. That's what he wants. Here's the pitch. Stud. A pretty good idea and location with that off speed. Just a better job by Florentino to spoil it. That's exactly the kind of pitch you want in the spot you want. Yeah, you have to stay alive on that one. Runner goes, and it's foul again. That one in 83. That was at 87, rather, but. He just went with the fastball. Don't think he's going to throw too straight to Florentino. I'd expect Dixon to maybe try and go again, expecting the off speed here on another 2-2. They get the sign. He's going to stay put. Sends one up the middle and gets one past Curiel. Dixon hustling the third to throw the tag. Not in time as they were unable to get him. Patrick Baggett, his tag was a tad late. It was a heck of a slide from Dixon. Used the inside part of the base. The ball beat him there. The tag did not. That was an aggressive, uh, aggressive go from Dixon, but he just was able to get the right hand in there, and that umpire was all over it. Wasn't too much opposition from Baggett. And Florentino advances a second on the play. So that's just a risky call, but it pays off, Dixon. Now a third with two runners on with only one out. Brings up Nick Webb. And again, another fast start for the Mammoths. Trying to put up a run in the top of the first. That's been the good part of their game. A big swing and a miss. Webb starting the season off at 222. Has driven in five runs on the season. Was one for three last night. Pulls this one to right on a line, but it's going to be caught by Nick Pastor. Dixon is going to score on the sacrifice fly. Florentino advances to third, and the Mammoths off to a one nothing start. Doing a job, just putting a ball in the air deep in the outfield. Webb didn't even get all of it. Looked like it maybe jammed him a bit, but... Hit it that far. There was no chance for Pastor. And another lead for the Mammoths. Always like when your pitcher can go out with the lead. So they've gotten off to a decent start. Let's see how they can sustain it. Two outs and a runner 90 feet from home. Duncan Hewitt. Can do just that. 6-2, um, 215 DH from Indianapolis. Went to Butler University. Has solid numbers against Unicorns. In the last series they played them, he went two for six. Had a double and an RBI. That was back on the 27th when these last two teams played against each other. Hewitt in a hit hitter-friendly count. At 84, Suns one right down the middle. Pretty good pitch on two and one. Did a nice job locating on the corners. Trying to limit the damage. 2-1 pitch. Up. Gets one pass. Norgren. Florentino scores. And it's an RBI single for Duncan Hewitt. He does that. Didn't try to do too much with it. Again, didn't hit it extremely hard. Just right back up the middle. Norgren was kind of caught in between the dive. It went underneath his arm. Wouldn't have gotten to it if he didn't, and that's a nice piece of two-out hitting from Duncan Hewitt. And again, Mammoths doing a nice job getting off to a hot start. Now the message in that dugout is going to be, guys, nine innings. We had a good first. That's one-ninth of the equation. Don't let up. An early mound visit for the Unicorns. Let's take a look back at that pitch at 85 miles an hour. Oh, here, you know, top part of the strike zone, but. Hewitt was able to send it through past Norgren. This brings up Alex Steinbach.
Winks at the first pitch right to the netting at 84. A 5 for 23 start for the man out of Plainfield, Illinois. That one up and in. Been a long inning for Tomasic. About to throw his 25th pitch. That's a that's a lot for that first inning. You don't like to see that bullpen has to be start to get on alert knowing that the pitch counts up early. Good stop by Gomez. As he would is forced to stay over at first, you know. Want to set the tone and you don't want to have a long day for the bullpen. You, know, you played on Wednesday. You didn't, have, you didn't go through that stretch like the Mammoth said. But you still want to have your guys healthy. Especially with a turnaround on Sunday. Because it's a 2-2 count. Right up to second base. Good play by Norgren. Throws it over to Lucas Gooden for the third out. But but not before the Mammoths get two. Thanks to the RB. Thanks to the sack fly by Nick Webb and the RBI single by Duncan Hewitt. And it's a 2-0 Mammoths lead over the Unicorns as we head to the bottom of the first. We're going to send it down to Kara Wolfbauer for our sweetheart of the game sponsored by Thrifty Florist. One thing that makes Detroit Mercy unique and different from other universities is that the faculty truly care about you and they're always there to help. Whether it's asking questions after class or going into the office hours, they're always there to lend a hand and really make you feel at home. People are here to work together and whether like you have a question or you're discussing topics within the class, you can go up to your professor and they know your name. They're just willing to help you become a better overall student. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. Throughout your life, from big moments to ones well-earned, we're your financial guardian angel. Alliance Catholic Credit Union. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. And welcome back, everyone. The Mammoths off to a 2-0 start over the Unicorns here on this Friday night here at Jimmy John's Field. Alex Manassa takes the bump in his second start in his USPBL career. I mentioned coming off on Sunday against the Hoppers. Faces Josh Baker to lead it off for the Unicorns. Baker's an odd leadoff hitter, at least his stats say so. Only three hits on the year, but two of them have gone over the fence. Swings on the second pitch he sees for a leadoff single into right. Make it four hits. It does a pretty good job off the leadoff spot. And his two home runs he had, that was back on opening day against the Beavers you know, a couple weeks ago. We're going to take a quick look 
at the mammoth starting defense or three-dimensional defensive alignment. Brady, who do they got on the field tonight? Well, they have a pretty decent outfield with Ward Hacklin, Burl Dixon, and Francis Florentino. That right side of the outfield pretty well covered. Steinbach, Blin, Trahey, Webb make up the defense left to right, and Zach Beadle behind the plate. Popped up. Shallow right. Florentino makes the catch. One pitch and one out for Donovan Curiel. Lucas Scudden now stepping in. One of the players that have recently gotten started playing. Oh, coming from Indiana Wesleyan, who made a deep run in the NAIA National Tournament. His first game was on Wednesday against the Hoppers, where he went one for four. Ooh, that's a pretty generous call on the first pitch. That's about as low and outside as you can get with that fastball. Yeah, that was very, very friendly for the pitcher. Missed outside at 80 miles an hour in the low part of the zone. That wasn't too dissimilar. Maybe a tick lower. But I like the idea from Manasseh. Hey, you just got, you gave me a pitcher's pitch in that spot. I'm going to come right back to it. That was just so close. Those two missed outside at 83. Two one count on Gooden. Back over the first. Ball gets away. They were trying to pick him off. Baker rounding second. This one goes all the way near the dugout. And Baker is standing up at third. And then this will go all the way back behind home plate. The throw, the tag. They got him. Oh man, that's a long way to run. <laughs> For that result, there's so much foul territory in Jimmy John's field. Have to be a little more aware of the situation. I know it's being thrown around, but unless you're very sure you can make it, you were on third with, with one away, gave a great opportunity for Gooden to try and get a run back. Instead, bases are empty with two away. Man, yeah, he was at first base, and then look back at it, just trying to look at the replay on how that went down. As Manasseh was maybe miscommunication over to Nick Webb, and then Baker was just hustling all the way to third, and the throw went all the way back behind home plate. And he was trying to score, but the tag by Beadle, able to beat him that time. Now it's three and one, two out bases empty after that. Down the left field line, but foul. The counts run full, and that's just huge, you know, for the Unicorns after that mistake. You could have a rudder on third with one out, and... Well, the Mammoths have thrown the ball around a little bit. They haven't helped themselves at times, and it was a little bit of everything in that play. They, it went no, 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 yes, as they get, got the out at home. Going to be a two-out walk for Gooden. That one missed the top outside corner. Now looking to do a two-out rally now with Nick Pastor. Coming in six for 17 on the season. It's two for three on Wednesday. A pretty good pitch to lead off the, the at-bat. That outside corner, the outside part of the plate to lefties has been a bit ambiguous at this point. And there's going to be seven lefties in the lineup for for the Unicorns, so Manasseh trying to figure out where he can and can't go early in his outing. Yeah, that's just something that I talked with, uh, talked with uh, Skipper Jim Essien about having a lefty-heavy lineup, no seven out of the nine, and it's just to show that. This one rolls over to third. Steinbach, the throw, not in time. As they were unable to get past Storr. 
So it's an infield single. Bars on first and second with two away. You know, that's a heck of an effort from Steinbach, and he did everything right. Nick Pastor is just too fast. There are a lot of other guys in the league, if he makes that same play, he gets it out, and hey, he's feeling good. He's going back to the dugout, all smiles. Instead, Pastor, wheels are just too great, never had a chance. There, you couldn't ask Steinbach to do anything better than that. Yeah, that was just really tough. The way he hit it, it was just kind of, kind of slowly rolled over. Brunson, one foul on the right field line. Brunson from Auburn, Indiana. A 3 for 11 start on the season. Has that open hole up the middle. On 80 miles an hour to make it 0 2. It's 2.50 last season. Appeared in eight games for the Unicorns. Chopped foul. This is a spot where the Mammoths have struggled. They got the first two out. Hey, they got a little bit of luck getting Baker trying to advance all the way to home on the, on the bad pickoff. Two runners on with two away. Slam the door here. Hey, take it to the second inning. Still up two to nothing exactly what Manassas thinking in mind. He looks at the runners, pitching from the stretch. Oh, just missed. At 75. That's them with that. On that one. Set again. Stays alive after that one. Cam Norgren would be next. So counts one and two. Unicorns with two runners on. Trying to rally. Manassa takes a long look, now gets set to throw. Brunson spoils that one again. Horton Park here for the Unicorns. After running into an out on the bad pickoff. Trying to make it up here. 1-2 pitch. That went inside. 2-2. Two and two. All this two-out action has brought up the pitch count of Manassa. And a Mammoth lineup and a Mammoth, or I should say a Mammoth pitching staff that needs Manassa to stretch out four or five innings. 20 pitches in the first is not a recipe for success. Well, held up barely to run the count ball that was going in at 82 miles an hour. No, he was thinking about swinging, but held it back just in time. Now Manassa with the payoff pitch, trying to... Get out of this inning. Runners on the move. In the air to right. Florentino under it. Hauls it in. And the Unicorn strand two. And it's a 2 nothing Mammoths lead. How do you get to the top of the second? We'll be back after this right here on the USPBL Network. One thing that makes Detroit Mercy unique and different from other universities is that the faculty truly care about you and they're always there to help. Whether it's asking questions after class or going into the office hours, they're always there to lend a hand and really make you feel at home. People are here to work together and whether like you have a question or you're discussing topics within the class, you can go up to your professor and they know your name. They're just willing to help you become a better overall student. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. 
slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. Make your move with a quick and easy mortgage from Genesis Credit Union. We have mortgages to fit your life. Genesis Credit Union. Visit us today. Welcome back. We're taking a look at the Mammoths dug out. It's a 2-0 lead for them. Got out of a jam oh, in the last half inning. Stranded two runners on. As the Unicorns almost scored on that play from Josh Baker and that miscommunication on the pickoff play, but got themselves out of it. Trying to hold on to this lead here. Reese Trahey will lead it off. Massick's going to look for a much quicker inning. Attack the strike zone. Starting off 2-0, that's not going to help your pitch count. It's going to let the bottom of the order sit on their pitch. Try to expand on the 2-0 lead. 7-8-9. Trahey, Beadle, and Blinn. For Coach Chelakowski's squad here tonight. 3-0 pitch. I'm on the fastball at 83. Three and one on Trehe. Starting off the season 231. Found the inside part of the plate to run the count fall on that cutter, 81. Gomez did a good job framing it. May have stole that strike and extended the at bat. Payoff coming. Down the left field line. And into foul territory. Sliding it is Patrick Baggett. He had to run a mile for that one. Yeah, he had. It was a long way. He used every inch of foul ground. And again, there is a swath of foul ground down the lines. And again, I bring it up every time very curiously. The backstop, very short, where it cuts off the bottom of your screen, is basically where the wall is behind home plate. Not a lot of room. Makes it interesting. Trey, he was walking over to first, but the umpire run him up. What a great way to get back into the count by Connor Tomasic to make Trehe get caught looking for the first out of the inning. Trehe may be trying to sell that it missed a little bit. Hey, start going down to first. Yeah, and some of players, you have to know where it stands. You try and say, hey, make them tell you no. Make, make you ring them up. Other umpires sometimes might take that the other way and go, no, 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 I make the call. And you might actually sway them in the other direction. Yeah, just up to the preference of the umpire. Zach Beadle stepping in. Coming from Livonia. The slider at 76 on that foul ball. Went to Madonna University in Livonia. Starting off the season 3 of 18. Oh. Yes. Masik slipped on that. That's uh, it's never something you want to see. I don't know if it looked like he had some dirt in his cleat, trying to knock it out. That's a, uh, that's a bit odd. Yeah, don't see really, but getting back to work. A little flare and to right's gonna drop. So a bloop single for Zach Beadle. A one out single for him. Brings up Denver Blinn, the number nine hitter. Blinn from West Fargo, North Dakota. Another Indiana Wesleyan grad here in the USPBL. Takes a big swing and a miss. And a top part of the strike zone on Tomasic. 
was a very talented hitter in his collegiate career. Beto was thinking about going. Sometimes they'll move around on first dance, fake the steal, just trying to throw the pitcher off, especially to get runners on. Anything you can do to give your batter the edge. Very short lead for Beetle. Not bluffing that time, but Blinn sends that one in to the netting. He was 0 for 3 last night, struck out twice against the Beavers. 1 2 pitch. That one out of, out of behind, behind the seats. One, two count on the number nine header. Tomasic looks over at first, pitching from the stretch. Makes a long look, getting into his windup. And swing and a miss goes down Denver Blinn for the second out of the inning. The That's that's a heck of a pitch from Tomasic. It's, it's going straight, 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 and then about 15 feet from home plate starts to dive away, and by that point, you're already committed. That's a heck of a strikeout pitch by, by Connor Tomasic. Brings it back to the top of the order, Ward Hacklin. Grounded to short his first time up. 2-0, Mammoth's lead. That one in. Really got him on the back or on the side, but he moved out of the way. One up and in. 2-0 and oh on Hacklin. Hacklin's off to a 2-for-13 start on the year. And again, he had a really nice approach last night moving up to the leadoff spot. Worked a deep count and another good hitter's count. See if he can take advantage if he gets the pitch to hit. Off the middle. Off to Curiel. He'll get the force at second. Cam Norgren. Stops on the bag. And that's going to do it here for the top half of the second inning. Still a 2 nothing Mammoth's lead. We're going to send it down now to Carol Wolfire for our kid of the game. Throughout your life, from big moments to ones well-earned, we're your financial guardian angel. Alliance Catholic Credit Union. Fifth Third Extra Time helps you do you better. So kick back and relax. You have extra time to avoid overdraft fees. Fifth Third Extra Time. This is banking a fifth third better. The unicorns step up to bat. You're in the bottom half of the second inning, down two nothing to the mammoths. On a first pitch swinging by Cam Norgren into center field, stepping back just a few 
Beat back, Burl Dixon for a one pitch, one out on a long fly ball. He makes those plays easy. They look easy. He's always comes. He's really excited to be here, and he looks forward to it every day, and the fans love it. He is the star of the show, Brady. <laughs> Me too. He's many... He's one of them. He's the main reason why fans come out here. <laughs> James Moses now steps in from Towson, Maryland. A oh, guy has done really well since he started up here for the Unicorns. Four for ten to start the year. I think Jim Essien is really happy to see it with him. Tries to do it again at 77. Runs the count full. Time called. Moses was one for three on Wednesday. A run score and a stolen base. Missed way outside. And Moses will get a free pass. Justin Gomez steps up to the plate. Coming in batting 235. Catcher from Bellflower, California. We'll see how this bottom part of the lineup can contribute for the Unicorns. NASA needs to uh, keep attacking the zone, fill it up. That's something that the Mammoths have struggled with all the, well, the last week, really, on this losing streak. Not throwing strikes. Attack the zone. When he's been in the zone, he's done pretty well. Upstairs at 80 miles an hour. This unicorn team wants to be aggressive. Put it in the zone. Make them, if they're going to swing early, get that weak contact like you did against Nor. Well, that wasn't weak contact, but get the contact like you did against Norgren. Keep that pitch count down. Already at 30, you're just an inning and a third. Yeah, that's been the story here for the Mammoths. You know, they've been going through a lot over the pitching depth that they have, especially with this long stretch, of, long stretch of games that they're in right now. Got to keep every arm healthy. We're going back over the first base, and they were unable to get Moses in time. The tag by Webb, just a little late. But what a good read by Zach Beadle to see that Moses was on the move. And he's on the same page as Webb. That was a good throw, good tag. Moses just using every bit of that lead. Good distance. Holds this one out of play. Three one on Gomez. Manassa taking a look. to throw one down the middle, run around the move, and send misses it high. Makes three walks in just an inning and a third of work. Can't defend the walk, especially when you're facing the bottom half of the order. That's when you really have to be a premier strike thrower. Make those guys beat you. Instead, three passes, not a whole lot of... Uh, not a whole lot of action on the on the field this half inning. Yeah, that's about the story for the Mammoths. You know, giving up a lot of walks. You know, 
That's what's something we saw on Sunday in that loss. Which is not giving everybody just a free pass. Now Beadle is going to have a brief chat with him. Whatever he's telling him, whether it's mechanical or mental, telling him to breathe through his eyelids, not sure, but he needs to start attacking the zone again because two walks can't do anything with that. Maybe letting him know, hey, one good pitch, one ground ball, you erase those first two walks, you get out of the inning, and you're feeling pretty good through two full. Just got to stay composed here. Now, after giving up those two straight walks, you just got to be able to do what you're comfortable with. Patrick Baggett. Since that one behind us here. From Blairsville, Georgia. And a graduate of Reinhardt University. Four for 18 to start the year for him. Skied way up. Into shallow right, Florentino calls off Trehe. Good communication out there. Yes, it was, and that's something Francis Florentino is not an English speaker. He speaks, does not speak English. So now that you see the communication, I believe it was the first day of the season, Florentino and Burl Dixon, a ball dropped in between them. Not too dissimilar from that. So now you're starting to at least get a communication. That's just one small, that's one small instance of the, the team starting to gel. Now Alejandro Lara is pinch hitting for Baker. That is a... Interesting move. I have to imagine something happened to Baker on that slide home. Well, I'm not sure what because you have two guys on the bench and the other one, Bisharat, is a, is a catcher and a first baseman. Lara sends it up to right for a base hit. And going to score is Moses. Gomez goes to third, RBI single on a pitch hit. By Alejandro Lara, and it's a 2-1 game. Not too often you get a second inning pinch hit RBI single. But Lara came in probably uh, unexpectedly, and he delivers right away. That's his fourth ribby on the season. As Moses scores, he got runners on the corners. The Unicorns are up to something here with two outs. Donovan Curiel steps into the batter's box to look to tie the game, and he swings at the first pitch. Took a long ride into left, but Ward Hacklin underneath it to make the routine play. But the Unicorns get on the board thanks to a pinch hit, RBI single by Alejandro Lara, and it's a 2-1 game. The man is still in the driver's seat. We'll be back for the top of the third right here on the USPBL Network. With a transforming world, we can see how drastically the world is heading towards automation. And so, we need 24-7 surveillance and security systems for our homes and businesses to avoid any theft or breach of privacy. Jarpcom brings the installation of security cameras to the tip of your fingers with our state-of-the-art mobile app. Jarpcom also provides surveillance monitoring of your entire property with flexible options that offer a dependable solution to be scaled to fit any domestic or commercial need. Contact JARPCOM today for a free estimate at 800-369-0374 or look us up on the web at JARPCOM.com. Make your move with a quick and easy mortgage from Genesis Credit Union. We have mortgages to fit your life. Genesis Credit Union. Visit us today. We don't compare because we own a Welcome back, everyone. The fans are having a good time here at Jimmy John's Field on this Friday night. It's a gorgeous night for baseball here in downtown Utica, Michigan. The Mammoths 
up 2-1 to one over the Utica Unicorns. Get ready to start the top half of the third inning. Alex Johnson and Brady Beaton with you for the call here tonight. Connor Tomasa gets back on the bump. Let's see how the Mammoths respond. They give up a run in the bottom half of the second. Do they, again, they got off to a hot start. Can they sustain it? This is part of sustaining it. The other team punches back. Are you just going to stay, stay back and let it happen? Or you have two, three, four coming up in your lineup. Probably three of your most dangerous hitters. See if you can get, get a run back on Tomasic. He'll face Dixon, Florentino, and Webb. That part of the order the Mammoths heavily rely on. So we'll see how they can handle it here. As Tomasic tries to keep this game in check. We're about to get ready to go here. First pitch, a soft dribbler, up to Baggett, and lost it out of his hand. That's just a tough play for Patrick Baggett. And the reason why that's a tough play is because Burl Dixon is so quick. If it's not one of the faster guys in the league coming out of the box, then Baggett doesn't try to look up or try to rush and make that play. That is the speed of Dixon coming into play on that slow dribbler. Yeah, they called that a hit. You know, I, I think that's the right call. Yeah. Yeah. Florentino, a top part of the zone, sends it back foul. Dixon got a little antsy over it first last time, trying to move up. Let's see if he goes in motion at all here the second time he's out board. It's a good size lead. Over at first, Tomasic not really paying attention to him much. Bringing that high leg kick makes it easier for runners to steal on. If he mixes in a slide step at all. We'll see what he does, especially with Dixon. you got to be careful with him. Dixon, five for six on the base pass this season. Tomasic misses that one high. Got the heavy with us here on YouTube and Facebook here on the USPBL Network. Make sure you stop by and put something in the comments section on where you're tuning in from tonight. Right off the top of the netting, the fans were ready to grab a souvenir. Yes, the netting is so high up here at Jimmy John's Field. No, for fan safety. A 2 1 game, 1 2 pitch. Takes one hop. It's it over now to Norgren. Unable to get the double play over to Gooden. But they do get Dixon out at second for the fielder's choice. Was just hit too high, was not tailor-made at all. Florentino, he can move pretty well also. When Norgren, well, he did everything right. There was just no chance to get Florentino on the high chopper. Nick Webb steps in now. No, that's just a tough play. You wanted to turn two, but that's the way the ball goes. Goes inside at 81 to start on Webb, who had that sacrifice fly. to put the Mammoths on the board. Back in the first inning. Missed away at 77. Pitch count's already at 55 for Kano Tomasic. Done a decent job this inning. If he can get a, a better ground ball this time, get out of the third with a relatively low count in this inning. Check Swain, did he go? They're gonna say yes. Went a little too far. No, I understand why you appeal to the field umpire. Usually when they're down the lines, you have a good vision. But when you have the two umpire crew, does he really have a better view than the guy behind the plate? Florentino goes. Rolls over to second base. Norgwin throws it to Gooden to get the for sure out. It was a good read by Florentino. 
to break up the double play as he was on the move. So two outs, runner in scoring position for Duncan Hewitt. Hewitt came up big in this spot and is able just to muscle one up the middle. Maybe looking for a bit of a barrel this time, but hopefully, he's hoping at least, they had another RBI and have a pretty good day by the third inning. Now one for one already. Good right. location by Tomasic. Good front door breaking ball. And yeah, that was coming in at 68 miles an hour. Hewitt was not ready for that one. 1-1 one, one pitch. Took a big swing and a miss at 77. Slow it down, speed it back up. Putting Hewitt in the rocking chair. We're able to get out of this here. One two pitch coming. And the dirt. Good waste pitch. You're ahead in the count. Right idea loan away. That dropping action. Hewitt did a nice job to spit on it. He's a catcher. He understands how they want to sequence pitches more than most. Two two offering. Missed high at seventy seven miles an hour. Tomasic using his secondary pitches. Up next would be Steinbach. Payoff pitch coming. That sends it right to the screen. Hewitt's on it. He's battling. That pitch count just keeps ballooning. Maybe, I mean, there's, I haven't seen any action in the bullpen, but that's getting quite large for Tomasic through three. Almost. Here's 64, and just missed downstairs at 73 miles an hour. Heck of an at-bat from Hewitt. Walks won't help the pitch count, but with two away, very patient fouls off a few good pitches. Keeps the inning alive. Steinbach rounded to second his first time up, and getting worried here for the Unicorns. Trying to get out of this for Tomasic. We had that lengthy first inning. He allowed those two runs. And well, you just scored in the bottom of the second. You want to put that goose egg up and give your offense another chance to, to extend or keep piling on. Don't want the other team to slow down your momentum at all, especially when you have two away and. Looks like a pretty workable inning. I had an account on Steinbach trying to close this out. He can't. One and two. Steinbach, one for six against the Unicorns this season. Make that one for seven as Tomasic makes him chase upstairs and sits him down swinging and it's that's a fifth third out of the game presented by fifth third bank as Connor Tomasic gets out of a jam so it's still a 2-1 mammoth lead over the unicorns as we head to the bottom of the third inning and, and, and there's JJ the water boy sponsored by Michigan First Credit Union Always make sure our umpires are hydrated and ready to go. Now he gets a nice treat to fuel him for the rest of the game. And JJ making sure all the umpires are well hydrated, especially in this summer weather. He does a lot, you know, gets the bats and now fuels the umpires, gets them some refueled and rehydrated. That's our race. Our mascot race of the game. I was looking at through that. It's our DTE Kid Race the Mascot. Mascots need to pick it up. They have continued their losing streak from last year. And at least he got around third this time, but still not even close. 
Uh, congratulations to the kid. And our DTE Kid Race the Mascot. Alex Manassa gets ready to get back to work in the bottom of the third inning. He allowed that run last inning, but look at what he does here. So went through the second part of the lineup. Something that was a struggle in his last outing. And they're going to keep him back out there. He's only thrown 38 pitches again. They have a lot of games in a short time span. And again, not a whole lot of arms. You look at the entire makeup of their pitching staff. They have nine guys. That's not a lot of arms. That's just a bit over what a, a normal major league bullpen would be. So they're really relying on Manassa to work through. Maybe another two, three innings would be great. See if he makes adjustments because you know the pitchers will. Yeah. That's something he needs to do here you know, with the second time through the order. Lucas Gooden, Nick Pastor, Alec Brunson he'll face. Is this one skied in the air for a can of corn? Good play by Denver Blinn to haul it in. Now here comes Nick Pastor. Pastor got that infield single his last time up. Pastor is a key player, especially in the outfield. That's done really well. Coming in. Manassa getting a very generous call on that low inside corner. Yeah, and I think Beetle does a nice job selling the strike as well. He's got a couple of those his way so far. Chopped up the, the second. Reese Trehe throws it to Nick Webb for a quick second out. Alec Brunson threw out to right his first time up. And a really nice inning from Manassi. You got the first two guys down rather quietly. Now don't mess around. Don't walk a guy. Don't, don't give up a couple of hits. Hey, go one, two, three, and make yourself feel really good. That's a really good first pitch. Off speed, starting off Brunson. Put it in the right spot. I like how he starts off the, the designated hitter, Brunson. Yeah, he made him second think. A oh, little bit of a half swing on that. Chopped over the third base side. And off of Blinn and Steinbach, they were gliding into each other. And that's what Taylor Jelenkowski was talking to us about before the game. Hey, your pitcher, he hasn't struggled through the first two innings, but he's had to labor a bit through the first two innings. And then he gets the first two guys out in the third. He gets a slow chopper to the left side. Just a lack of communication. And now a few extra pitches going on the arm on a weekend where you need to take advantage of every out he throws. That's a good pitch and a good and just didn't get the result. I know that was just really close. You know, I don't know if there was some miscommunication. It had to have been. You got you've got to talk there. You need to be out in the inning right now. Yeah, Should that, be getting ready for the the mammoths to come up to bat. Yeah, that's something that cost them last night. Some miscommunication in the bottom of the eighth where the Beavers put on a five spot. Back to first base. And oh, two. Brunson. And if you think, well, what, what's the? You're making a bigger deal. Hey, it was a, it was one play. There's only a runner at first with two away. Now for Manassa, he's started this batter out 0 and 2. But if he goes an extra 10, 15 pitches, the domino effect throughout the weekend, it, it can be, it can be nothing, or it could make a big difference. And a one pitch could be the difference. Finds a hole into right center. Two runners on now. We'll see how huge 
That play makes. There you go, yeah. That's three extra pitches he's had to throw this inning and, and another base knock. And the other thing that you don't really think about, okay, it would have been six, seven, eight coming up next inning. Instead, next inning at, war at best will likely be eight, nine, one, and that's if they retire Moses. Moses walk. That one will stay fair. Just roll down the first baseline. Webb grabs it, steps on the bag, and the Mammoths retire the Unicorns after allowing two straight hits. But no damage caused after that. So we're going to head now to the fourth inning of play. We're going to send it. We're going to send it down. We're going to we're going to step aside. We'll be back here on the USPPL Network. First State Bank is a locally owned and operated business. We're part of your community. At FSBCares.com, you'll find ways that we're making a difference by featuring locally owned and operated businesses, providing access to helpful financial resources, and engaging with community. FSBCares.com is part of our commitment to the neighborhood because strong neighbors mean stronger communities. Where good neighbors do great things. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. One thing that makes Detroit Mercy unique and different from other universities is that the faculty truly care about you and they're always there to help. Whether it's asking questions after class or going into the office hours, they're always there to lend a hand and really make you feel at home. People are here to work together and whether like you have a question or you're discussing topics within the class, you can go up to your professor and they know your name. They're just willing to help you become a better overall student. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. And welcome back everyone. Get ready to start the fourth inning. Um, when it's time, when it's time for baseball, it's time for beer. Two-Hearted Ale has been aimed the number one beer in America for the past four years by members of the American Home Brewers Association. Play ball with the best. Two-Hearted Ale, the iconic American IPA from Bell's Brewery, Cornstock, Michigan. Please drink responsibly. So it's a 2-1 Mammoth's advantage over the Utica Unicorns. Here in the top half of the fourth inning, going to be the bottom of the order. Trahey, Beetle, and Blend do up. But we'll see what they can do here, if they can add on to this lead. There's some action in the Unicorn bullpen, so hoping to get at least one more inning out of Connor Tomasic. But if this inning goes sideways, we could see a change in the middle of the fourth. Sky did the air into center field. Going in is Moses for the first out of the inning. Some action in the bullpen like you were saying, Brady. It's like it's Huffman just starting to get warm. Don't know. Wasn't following him too close. Don't know if he's ready to go if, if the call's made or if he's just starting up his warm-up routine. I think he's ready to go whenever Skip gives the, the motion to the pen. Beetle is up now with the box. Is that one foul? Alejandro Lara stays in the game. He's in left in place of Josh Baker. Came in in the second inning. Right down the heart of the middle. One, two count. On Zach Beetle. He got a single his last time up. Just upstairs at 86 miles an hour. Two-two count. 
Tomasic getting into his windup. Right down the middle for strike three. Couldn't have asked for a better pitch from Connor Tomasic. As he rings up Zach Beadle for out number two. Found that low outside corner. Gomez sold it. And Tomasic has settled in a bit. Second time through the order. Traditionally and, and usually you'll see the advantage go to the batters. But the second time through, it's been one hit and one walk for Tomasic. Done a very nice job adjusting to these mammoths' bats. Punch out number four for Tomasic as Denver Blinn steps in. He's one of the strikeout victims here today. Pulls that one to left. Running in is Alejandro Lara to make the play. Tomasic sends the Mammoths down in order, and we head to the bottom of the fourth. We'll be back after this on the US PBL Network. The Mammoths still have the lead. There are many things you can rely on in this world, like a sunny day brightening your mood, your mom baking the world's best apple pie, and never a dull moment in running your business. And when it comes to time-consuming HR tasks, you can rely on Tryon. Tryon can handle payroll and taxes, employee benefits, and more, so you can stay focused on attracting and retaining the best talent. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. Fifth Third Bank. Yeah, it's a quirky name. But here's the thing. Five thirds equals 166.7%. So we put 166.7% into everything we do. Like automatically getting you your paycheck up to two days early. Giving you well-deserved extra time to avoid overdraft fees. And helping you borrow from your future self. This is banking a Fifth Third better. What makes Detroit Mercy so unique is the fact that it's in the middle of Detroit and especially with their service learning programs, you really get a chance to be a part of the community. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. Welcome back, everyone, to Jimmy John's Field. It's the bottom of the fourth inning. Mammoths in control 2-1 to one over the Utica Unicorns on this Macomb County Police Officers Appreciation Night presented by Jim Cosley Buick GMC as well as Meet the Unicorns Night. As they step up to bat here, 8-9-1 Gomez, Baggett, and Lara do up. Alec Manassa. Mm -hmm. Just like I talked about and gave praise to his counterpart from the Unicorns, Tomasic Manassa, done a nice job not walking anyone the last nine batters. Walking three in the first eight, and then since then, been very, very good at attacking the zone and getting weaker contact. Yeah, that has been the story you know, for the Mammoths. Over the last few games, you know, these walks, it was a chopper to second, hold slowly. Reese Trahey to Nick Webb for the first out of the inning. That's what Manassa needs to do, get that soft contact on the ground early, that two-seam fastball, the changeup, diving down, get them to roll it over, especially against the bottom of the lineup. And now you're sitting through three and a third at 51 pitches, and you're going, that's not that bad of a, uh, of a pace you're on. I want to be able to pack low in the zone, make... Unicorns hit very soft. Just a different story for Manasseh here so far. You know, from Sunday. We're just easing into it now. You know, that first start, you know, was tough, but, you know, he's coming in today, was able to talk with him. He's happy coming back out here. Get another chance. He's doing really well and taking advantage of it, Brady. Yes, he has, and, and I like the bounce back, the resiliency of the first eight batters he faced. He only retired three. It was a, a couple of hits and a few walks. Since then, he's been throwing a lot of out. 
That's that one at 78. At the outside part of the plate. 3 1 count on Patrick Baggett. Runs it full with that foul ball. There's some fans having a good time on this Friday night here in downtown Utica. Always good to come out and watch a ball game as Manasseh moved it in on Baggett and he gets a walk. Just as I was complimenting Manasseh for attacking the zone, the wild bug strikes again. And you never want to walk anyone, and it's cliche, but you definitely never want to walk the nine hitter. Now, Lara, he pinch hit last time. He drove in a run, fresh off the bench. Coming in for Josh Baker. Well, he scored. He tried to score, but swings at the first pitch and lines it to Dixon. Didn't take a full swing, tried to hold up, and well, I've, that's about as far as I've seen a check swing hit go. I mentioned Lara, he came in for Josh Baker. Well, Baker was on that play that was a missed throw in the pickoff and was trying to score from first base. And it was out on the throw at home. As here comes Donovan Curiel. 0 for 2 with a pop out and a fly out. That's the first pitch upstairs from Anasa. No, had a chance to talk with him before the game. He's really enjoyed it here. And it was, everything's been doing really well. Well, to start the season. To meet the Unicorns tonight. You know, they got a chance to interact with fans. You know, take some photos, sign autographs. You know, it was really good to feel about it. You know, representing you know, the team and the entire USPBL. You know, to give back to the fans. That's one of the best parts about the, the lower levels of baseball is the interactivity, how, the proximity where you are right there. You can meet the guy you see out there, you can get an autograph, get a picture with them. They're, they're, not, they're not escorted off. You, you get a chance to actually talk with them and, and get to know who you're watching on the field. Yeah, I know. The, well, the fans get excited, especially the younger guys. This will swan on into shallow center. Burl Dixon coming on in and making the catch. But besides a one-out walk, Manasseh gets out of it with no damage. We head to the top of the fifth. It's a 2-1 Mammoth's lead over the Unicorns. We're back here on the USPPL Network. Don't go anywhere. What are the odds that we're neighbors, where you've known each other whole lives, and both tear the exact same things in this exact same knee? So an ACL tear is an injury to the main stabilizing structure of the knee. You want a good team around you, because then you know that what you're doing is going to help you in the long run. My message to everyone who's helped me, thank you so much, because you guys helped me progress so much. Also hearing it from a friend that's went through the exact same thing, I think sort of helps that know that there's a bright side at the end. They call me Prospects, since the day I was born is a diver's watch. The challengers of the world have taught me many things. Life is not a numbers game. It's about challenging ourselves. No matter what happens, just follow your heart. These pioneers drive our generation forward. Not by setting records, but by never giving up. Keep going forward. Prospects. Available at Lucido Fine Jewelry. Welcome back, everyone, to Jimmy John's Field. There's a young fan right there looking for an autograph. You're on Meet the Unicorns Night. As the Unicorns get back on the mound, and it's been a good one here so far. A 2-1 ball game. Fans are into it here now. We've got a new pitcher, Andrew Huffman, for the Unicorns. 
And he'll come at you with a five pitch mix, uh, both fastballs, a curveball, a slider, and a splitter. So something that moves every way. You have a fastball, that straight one with a little bit of a run. The splitter will drop straight down. The curveball goes more diagonally. And the slider with that horizontal cut. And coming from, coming from Division Three school um, in Brockport, New York, at S-U-N-Y Brockport. And take a look at his last appearance. Was game one against the Beavers last Saturday. He went three innings and 12 batters face. Four strikeouts and three walks. Uh, coming in at 6'2", 225. It's done well to start the year. Um, in his third appearance, five innings of work, only one run, and ten punch outs compared to four three passes. He's going to face the top of the order here to start the fifth. Ward Hacklin, Burl Dixon, and Francis Florentino. Hacklin's worked a couple of nice counts, just rolled over two pitches he's made contact on. Trying to look to elevate, get it over the shortstop's head, find a gap, get an extra base hit to lead this off. Ooh. Off of Gomez to the backstop. Ring the bell a bit. Stands in there. Let's take it a moment. Has that gap between third and short, right up the middle. Has those openings. We'll see if we can find one through either of those ways. Especially with how the defense has to be stanced now with the new rules. 2-2 offering, skied way up in the air, and foul ground, right near the netting. Good play by Lucas Gooden. That's unfortunate for Ward Hacklin. About 95% of ballparks across the country. That's probably in the stands and a souvenir. That was a long way in foul territory, and well, that's, that's one of the beauties of baseball. Each ballpark's a little different, and here at Jimmy John's, it's out number one. Yeah, well, similar to the Oakland Coliseum. Oh. Except that one was made for a football field, and you understand why there's a lot of foul ground here. There's just a ton. Look at that one by Burl Dixon, sending that one down. Going to be hold to just a single. I just took a hard rip of that one. Yeah, last hit he had... Barely went about 50 feet. That one, he, he barreled up and hit it pretty well. Just read that perfectly. Florentino, one for two. Advance to second. They got a single in advance to a second. Back in the first inning. Sends that one out of play in the right field line. Huffman's attacking batters. I like that approach. Have Florentino down in a in a count. And he has been the the breakout guy out of this league. He is Wowed about everyone that's watched him play. A throw over to first. Dixon standing up. And I'm curious to see how that will evolve. That was just a throw over to remind him, hey, I'm thinking about you. I'm, I know you're there. But when you only get two disengagements, that might start to, you might see that start to go extinct and by the wayside. And he's thinking about it. Florentino again spoils that one and Dixon was jumping down that first baseline. He wants to go. He wants to go. That's if what he's. That's his mindset. If Huffman doesn't look over, I have to imagine Dixon heading down to second. He's, he's trying to bait that throw. Gonna stay put. Florentino tips it into the glove for strike three. Huffman sends him down. 
You don't see Francis Florentino overmatched by a fastball too often, but that one got the better of him. Looked like he was sitting off speed. Now with two away, I think maybe Dixon will try to get into scoring position. If you get thrown out, worst case scenario, you have four, five, six coming up to lead off the six. We'll see what he does. Dixon, same put off the top of the netting by Webb. Webb with the sack fly and a ground out to second here tonight. Webb looking to continue this inning. Missed away by Huffman at 89 miles an hour. Webb coming from LSU, from the SEC. Got a piece of that one. Ooh. And when I had Gomez. Gomez. Gomez, this is. Where did it catch him? It was hard to see on the feed, but he was. He is not feeling strong. I feel good. Now, yeah, foul ball off his hands, and. Guessing it caught the throwing hand? Because it got tipped to that side. It's hard to see on the broadcast. He is in pain. And they're just going to take a look over at him now. And I'm going to just try to I'm just try to pull it up on. And baseball is so tough where you get just a little nagging injury to a finger or to a, to a hand or a ligament, and that can keep you out for a while. And it's still being looked at you know, by medical staff. and Unicorns, they only have Bisharat. On the bench, luckily for them, that he is a catcher. That's why usually in this league you'll see someone take, or every team will have about two catchers, and you see Bisharat getting warm right there. He's expecting that to go into the game. Yeah, Looks he's... like he's heading back to the clubhouse, probably to get his chest protector and other, other equipment. I didn't think he was going to be needed tonight. Well, you wouldn't want to see, you know, have one guy get ready for tonight and then on Sunday and – Checking his hand. It looks actually like the glove side hand. The catch's wrist, maybe? And this look looking back and oh, that was just just looking back and though at the um at the pitch. Oh. He immediately was showing he was in pain. It was just hard hit off of Webb. And that's that's always disheartening. I have to come out of the game. Especially with something so fluky like that. Now the Unicorns, they don't have anyone on the bench. Baker left the game early on. Yeah, so they got nobody. So Bisharat will come on in. Glad to have you with us here on the USPBL Network on YouTube and Facebook. Take a look at some people who are tuning in to tonight. Look over on YouTube. Tyrone Jackson says, greeting from Boston. And another person tuning in from St. John, Indiana. And from West Fargo, North, North Dakota. From New York. We got people all over the place tuning into tonight. Ron Matheny on Facebook says Clarksburg, West Virginia. He's tuning into from tonight. The counts one and two. Does it get back to play? Check swing did not go around. It'll be two and two on web. Huffman getting set. 
That one is going way out. Here are the third baseline seats. So Bisharat is the new catcher. Of all the positions on the field, coming in cold at catcher has got to be the toughest, especially mid-inning. Yeah, that, that is tough. You no, know, especially like this. Just coming in, ready to go. Tap or foul. Huffman has two outs, runner on first. Down one to the Mammoths. Huffman takes a look over at Dixon at first. Pitching from the stretch, Dixon on the move, swing and a miss. Huffman does his job, sits down Webb, and he retires the side. Heading to the bottom half of the fifth, Unicorns looking to tie this game up. We're back after this on the USPBL Network. Don't go anywhere. You dreamed of starting a company, not an HR department, but your business has grown fast. And so have the complexities of payroll and taxes, benefits administration, and other HR functions. That's why your business needs a professional employer organization like Tryon Solutions. Tryon provides businesses of all sizes access to top tier healthcare and employee benefit plans. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit relyontryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. One thing that makes Detroit Mercy unique and different from other universities is that the faculty truly care about you and they're always there to help. Whether it's asking questions after class or going into the office hours, they're always there to lend a hand and really make you feel at home. People are here to work together and whether like you have a question or you're discussing topics within the class, you can go up to your professor and they know your name. They're just willing to help you become a better overall student. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. It's been a good day for Alex Manassa. Comes back out for the bottom of the fifth inning. The Mammoths up 2-1 to one over the Utica Unicorns. Alex Johnson, ready beating with you for the call here tonight. At the halfway point of this contest, and got a good one in store. The Mammoths score two on a sacrifice fly by Webb and an RBI single by Duncan Hewitt in the first. And then the Unicorns. Cut the deficit in half with a pinch hit RBI single by Alejandro Lara. Both teams with five hits. The Mammoths do have one error that was on that pickoff play. Just for those who are tuning in, just to catch you up. And Manassas done this well, gotten through four. Hasn't recorded a strikeout yet. Gotten a lot of weak contact. A lot of those ground balls, some of those pop-ups. We'll face Gooden, Pastor, and Brunson here this inning. Carried out to right center. Dixon calling off Florentino. Had some good contact off the edge of the bat. And that's what Manasseh needs to do, get them to roll over, or in that situation, pop it up lazily into right center field. And this is likely the last inning for Manasseh, but if he can get them through five strong, that's a win for Taylor Jelenkowski and his squad. In the air to center field, Dixon again. Two putouts. He's been busy the last four outs by the Unicorns have all been fly outs to Burl Dixon. Yeah, that's four straight. You know, going back, no. 
to Lara and Curiel. Yeah, so four straight fly balls to him. Alec Brunson now. It's a top part of the zone at 76. He only had 66 pitches. I believe he was in the 30s through two. He's done a really nice job. Florentino moving in. He'll get that out. And it's a 1-2-3 quick inning for Alex Manassa. He's cruising along. And so are the Woolly Mammoths. Headed to the top of the sixth. If they're up 2-1, to one, we'll be back here on the USPBL Network. You dreamed of starting a company, not an HR department, but your business has grown fast. And so have the complexities of payroll and taxes, benefits administration, and other HR functions. That's why your business needs a professional employer organization like Tryon Solutions. Tryon provides businesses of all sizes access to top-tier healthcare and employee benefit plans. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. One thing that makes Detroit Mercy unique and different from other universities is that the faculty truly care about you and they're always there to help. Whether it's asking questions after class or going into the office hours, they're always there to lend a hand and really make you feel at home. People are here to work together and whether like you have a question or you're discussing topics within the class, you can go up to your professor and they know your name. They're just willing to help you become a better overall student. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. Top of the sixth we go. Unicorns down two to one as Huffman gets back to work. And a couple of strikeouts. Looking to keep the score where it is and we good throughout, but still some work to do for the Unicorns to keep this game where it is. That starts defensively. Do what you've been doing since that first inning. Again, first inning's been very kind to the West Side Woolly Mammoths past week or two. Every inning since then has been a bit of a different story, but their pitching's held up. I'm sure Taylor Jelenkowski's telling his guys in the dugout, hey, let's just scratch across the run. I don't care if we have to manufacture it. It doesn't have to be a big, pretty home run that you put on the Chevy Pavilion, just get a couple of, uh, get a base hit, move over somehow, and, and add an insurance run as we start to get near the late inning. Yeah, any, any runs you can get to just tack on, get some breathing room. You know, just want to be able to get past those losing streaks that you've been on. You know, last night, you know, trying to move past that. Oh, that was tough for them. And, the Beavers took that win away, and Hewitt swings at the top of the strike zone. Hewitt's done a nice job today. Had the RBI single back in the first, walked his last at-bat. He's had a good approach at the plate. He's been struggling a little bit numbers-wise on the scoreboard. Don't look awesome, 136, but he's done well tonight. Yeah, no doubt about that. No, Been really crucial so far, and... Some more action with some of the fans coming out here on this Friday night. Um, summer's right about here, you know, second week of June. Summer vacation and the perfect time of year to be a kid. Yes, indeed. And there's, well, Jimmy John's Field is a pretty nice place to spend your summer. A lot of worse places we could be than the ballpark. Grabbing a hot dog, some popcorn. Enjoying the ball game. Some other some other of the fans here. Some Arizona Diamondbacks fans. I was gonna wonder I don't know if they travel all this way from Arizona and then come here instead of watch their team play the Tigers. Three two. And that one foul.
Hoffman gets back on the mound. He's in a 3-2 count. Trying to sit Hewitt down, and he can't. Good eye by Duncan Hewitt, and he gets rewarded. A very quality at bat, and Huffman tried to quick pitch him a little bit, working out of the windup. Didn't bring the leg up. Tried to use the fastball, use the quick pitch to make it seem faster than it was. Good eye by Hewitt. Reaches for the third time today. And he's the designated hitter because Priamo Lozada took a ball off the ankle, wanted to give him the night off. Not too often you have one of your catchers at the DH spot, but Hewitt has taken the opportunity and ran with it here on a, on a Friday. Yeah, he's played DH you know, in some of the games so far. You know, it's you nothing new to him. The bench. It's not, you don't have a ton of options, but yeah, traditionally... You don't usually have him, but he's done a nice job out of there, hasn't he? Yeah, he has, and I've been talking to him a lot over the course of the last few days. You know, he's really happy to be here, you know, all the atmosphere and being with the team, and it's good all around. It's something he enjoys. You know, these fans coming out, and a good crowd here tonight uh, from, the, from the stands, you know, the picnic areas, the lawn seats. They're going to be, they're all excited for the fireworks show after this game presented by Magna. So that's what makes Friday night special here at Jimmy John's Field. One, two count on Steinbach, Huffman from the stretch. Go much. Tried to sell that one. It, 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 it wasn't there. Excuse me. Bisharat tried to sell that one. Wasn't really there to sell. And yeah, I thought that was a strike. No, how it was located. Me, but umpire thought it was a little low. Bisharat tried to sell. I, I still, I don't think it caught the uh, the plate too much. Popped up in the infield. Calling for it is good. And now Norgren calls him off. That's really huge. To get that out, looked like good it was going to get it, but Cam Norgren said, I got it. That's just good communication right there. Well, some of the things that you really need to have to be successful. Didn't want that let one. Didn't want that one to drop. Reese Trahe takes a big swing. Like he was sitting fastball on the 0-0 pitch. He was trying through it. He was trying to send that one for the fences. 0 for 2 tonight with a strikeout and a flyout. Gets the inside corner. 0-2. Huffman, it's 10 seconds, takes a look, over at first, look into to his motion on the 0-2, sure he wasn't going to take that. A fastball away, that's not really a, a pitch you get guys chasing at, it's the off speed, but righty lefty matchup, don't have the favorable. Maybe just seeing if the umpire would give him a little bit of leeway on the outer part of the plate. One two pitch. Hook down the right field line, but way out. That could have been a setup pitch as well. He went away, get him looking out there, then he busts him in on the hands, and it was a nice job by Trey. He just to spoil it enough. Keep the at bat alive. One and two with one out. A runner on first. That's Hewitt. One, two pitch. And it got him. And that's the frustrating one. You're up one and two in the count. You're having a nice sequence. Look like you're about to get the second out of the inning. And then you just miss with the pitch and plunk a guy on a pitch that it didn't just nick his arm. That was 
that was just a bad miss. I had a pitching coach tell me one time, those are the the hit batters with two strikes. Those are the pitches that break clipboards. And kind of fell down though by his shoe, his right shoe, as I'm looking at the replay. Uh, Trey, he's going to take the stroll to first. Two runners on with one out. Zach Beadle. That's a single. And struck out looking his last time up. Looking to capitalize here. I saw that the Mammoths overall as a team. We're taking a look at it here. Our runners in scoring position. Two for ten. And that one goes all the way to the backstop. Both runners advance easily. Compounding mistakes. You hit a guy to put a runner on second, then a wild pitch. You missed just a bit short. Now two guys have moved up. Hasn't been a ball put in play since well, this whole inning because Hewitt worked a, a really nice walk. Unicorns. Having somebody else warm up now with Huffman. Trying to get out of this. Like, looks like Matt Colucci getting ready. Second and third one out. Beetle and a hitter friendly count up 3-1. This is the spot where the Mammoths have struggled during their losing streak. A chance to give them a little insurance, add on to their lead in the middle late innings. Haven't done it yet. A good hitters count for Beetle. This is where you want to see a little bit of growth and maturity from this team. Often try to get back in the count, and he does right down the middle at 88 miles an hour. He had to there. Now this is a crucial pitch here. Can he get beat out? Huffman throws down the middle. A huge strikeout for Huffman and sits Beetle down. That's a, that's a pretty tough take is the low outside corner. That's one you have to protect with two strikes. Up to Denver Blinn. Second and third, two outs. Can't afford this opportunity to go to waste. No. Chasing a pitch above the strike zone for strike one. Not the way you want to get it started. Talked about it. Mammoths have an opportunity to add on to the lead. They had the unicorns kind of on their back, on their heel, on the back of their foot. Now it feels like Huffman in attack mode. That was good, but not so by the home plate umpire at 80 miles an hour. That was a good location. Just missed the bottom of the knees, caught the top of the shins. But I like the idea. Hey, you. First high fastball, then a change up down low. Keep Blinn moving the eye level and, and the speed. A one count. Swaying and a miss by Blinn. And now one strike away for Andrew Huffman to get out of this jam. Gone fast, slow, fast. He's changed eye level. He's moved his eyes both vertic uh, vertically and then in and out in that third dimension. Not side to side quite yet, but that's how as a pitcher... You have to keep guys guessing in all three axes. Up, down, in, out, and then right, left. One, two pitch coming from Huffman. And he gets Blinn down swinging. Andrew Huffman gets out of the jam as the Mammoth strand two and can't bring him home. So a 2-1 ball game. We'll see if the Unicorns can get some momentum on that. We're back for the bottom half of the sixth right here on the US PBL Network. The Dave & Buster's Method is designed to help you unlearn adulthood and reset our life around zapping stuff and cheering for stuff with your friends. Begin the method today with five free games. You know you want to. 
Check your checking. If your account doesn't get you pumped, amped, or geeked, make the switch to Genius Checking from Genesis Credit Union. It's just genius. Welcome back, everyone, to Jimmy John's Field. Bottom half of the sixth inning we go. Seth Beard will take the mound as the fans over there were by the Mammoths dug out. Trying to get an autograph. Look like he did. Now coming out here tonight on this Friday night here in downtown Utica, Michigan. We mentioned Seth Beard on the mound and Oh, look, look at that autograph. Those fans will be going home happy tonight. This is getting an autograph from Garrett Martin, who started the game last night. Uh, giving some fans some autographs. But looking at it on the mound, Seth Beard. We'll go back to him before we start play. From LaGrange, North Carolina. Now it's 6 feet 195. Went to Methodist University in Divi Division Three school. He's making his fifth appearance on the season. He had some action on Sunday against the Hoppers. He is going to look to take the baton from Manassa, who after a rough first two innings, I mean, he faced 11 batters in the first two innings. His final three, really solid. Got a lot of lazy fly balls, and that's something to build off of. Norgren drills one to center for a leadoff single. That's the swing you're going to think back in the clubhouse when you're going, man, that, that's what I need to do every time. Norgren does not have the numbers he likes coming out of the gate, but that's the one, hey, you look back and go, hey, I got it. Maybe that's one to, to get the little mojo going, put put together a few hits on the weekend. Yeah, that came one. That came hot off the bat. Let's see, unicorns. Have to tie and run on Moses. Showing bunt. Norgren glides back in to first safely. Beatles a bit upset with himself. He knew. He had Norgren a bit off the bag and a better throw. Maybe makes that a bang-bang play at first. It was close. Don't want to give away outs here at this stage of the game. As oh, another slip. Second time we've seen a pitcher fall. Yeah, no. Oh, it's just the rubber. I think it's the landing spot. I think he's just sliding a bit. I'm not sure. This is his balance, but he's back up now. What a check swing. A shallow fly ball caught by Hacklin. So one away. Here comes Jacob Bischrott, who's getting his first at bat here tonight. Came in for Justin Gomez. As a defensive replacement. You can see that bottom right, that looks like the spot where they're slipping when, is, when he's got the straight push towards the plate. I think he's doing all right, but with that down, and when he goes towards first base, I think that's where they're slipping a bit. That's just a tough spot. That's got to be careful out there. Don't want to fall down. Jacob Bisharat steps in, finds through the hole, 
past Steinbach. The Unicorns have something cooking. Two on and one out. And this has been how it's gone for the Mammoths. You had a chance in the top of the inning to add a couple of runs, and all of a sudden in the bottom half, after you strand two, a couple of base knocks, top of the order looming. This feels like the Unicorns' chance to either tie or take the lead. You never want to get that here-we-go-again feeling in a dugout. Yeah, a three-game losing streak, you know, had many chances. A last inning, a few other chances to build on to this lead, and you're going to look back at those moments where, you know, we didn't capitalize. We had runners on second and third, and we had some other chances that we could have gotten maybe a run or two here or there. Something we mentioned in the pregame, hot start, but since the first inning, five straight goose eggs have gone up on the scoreboard. The Unicorns have been able to scratch one um, on their seven hits. This is an opportunity for them that they can't afford to get away from them. But you got back it here, then you sent up to the top of the order. A pitch clock winding down. Get a time call with just three seconds. Can't give away a pitch. 2-0 count. Chopper up to the second. Trey He over to Webb. The runners advance, though, with two away. Now you're one good pitch away from keeping it at two to one. In a losing streak, this is a moment where you get out of it, you feel good, you feel like you, you shake a little bit off. Still a long way to go, only the sixth, but this is a moment where the last few games hasn't gone the mammoth's way. Facing a guy who's already got a hit today. I want to see how Beard attacks this. Lara coming in. He came out off the bench, ready to go at that pitch hit RBI single. Coming from Fairfield, California. Had a two for five day against the Beavers. This one's off the glove of Trey. He still got time to web. Able to get him out by about half a step. That was oh so close for the Unicorns to tie it up. But Trey, after bobbling it, throws it to Webb in time to get Laura out. And Taylor Jelenkowski in the Mammoth dugout can unclench a bit. He can take a deep breath because he was thinking, oh, no, th there's the spot. A nice job by Trey He to stay with it. That was a close play. That was close indeed. Still a 2-1 ball game. Heading to the top of the seventh. The Wally Mammoth still up front. We'll be back here on the U.S. PBL Network. Companies are competing for talent like never before. With the complexities of handling tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and other HR functions, it's easy to see how a professional employer organization like Tryon Solutions makes all the difference. Tryon empowers businesses of all sizes to attract and retain talent by offering access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. We build roads, bridges, wind farms, and pipelines, schools to skyscrapers. Our members create monuments. We operate. We're the operators and mechanics behind the advanced heavy machines that move Michigan forward. We maintain boilers and HVAC. Our members run the complex heating and cooling systems that we all depend on. Our training is second to none, and safety is our priority. We are operating engineers 324, and we keep Michigan running. Welcome back, everyone. Top of the seventh inning here at Jimmy John's Field on Meet the Unicorns Night. Andrew Huffman gets back to work. It's also Macomb County Police Officers Appreciation Night. Presented by Jim Cosley Buick, GMC. Going to be the top of the order for the Wally Mammoths, Ward Hacklin, Burl Dixon, and Francis Florentino. Huffman got out of a jam, stranded 
two runners in scoring position. The Mammoths got out of some trouble themselves on that last play. Final third of the game. Still 2-1. to one. No one's pushed across anything since the second. like to see the Mammoths try to take advantage of the opportunities they've been giving and not put so much stress on their pitching staff. Yeah, so we're going to see here. Huffman still working. He's at 46 pitches. Off the glove of Bisharat, 2-1. and one. And that wasn't a bad pitch. It's still probably a bit high, but when you don't squeeze it in the mitt, when you don't catch it clean, it makes it that much tougher for the umpire to give you the benefit of the doubt. Skied up way back out of play. 2-2 two, two count. Six seconds on the pitch clock for Huffman. It's upstairs, three and two. Payoff pitch coming, and a leadoff walk for Hacklin. Hacklin has struggled. It was over three before that walk. Gets a man aboard, Burl Dixon. He's been swinging a pretty darn good bat. Get on board, another chance for an insurance run here in the seventh. I want a guy like Dixon. Got a couple of hits here tonight. It's a chance here with a guy like Dixon coming off. A sensational night last night. Want to keep him going. Is that one missed at 85? Two for two. That's one to one. Well, two hits for Dixon. Acklin over at first. He has speed. You got to be careful and mindful of that if you're Huffman. He's going to take time off. Dixon's had one uh, not so great hit and one pretty good hit where he barreled it up last time. Seen the ball well. That average continues to rise. Moving in, Bishrot. It's away from him. He thought it was right at the knee of Dixon, but he just lost control of it, and Hacklin gets a second base, no problem. Now you have that runner in scoring position. You're Dixon. You've got to put a ball in play. Obviously, a base hit, you have an RBI chance. That, that's the clear and obvious situation. But, hey, hit a ball to the right side of the infield. You're a lefty. You pull one to second base. Gives a chance for Hacklin to move up to third. Just get that insurance run. You breathe a little easier. A two-run lead, okay, you're feeling all right. That means the, the tying run doesn't automatically come up to the plate. Two runs is a bit of a rally. You need to capitalize here. And we've been saying that throughout the entire broadcast. Two-one count. Pitch clock resets. Dixon takes strike two at 89 miles an hour. The outside part of the plate. It will be huge for Huffman if he can get Dixon out. Part one of working through the trickiest part of the Mammoth lineup. That's challenging. Look out of the way. At 89 again. And Three that, and two. That wasn't that bad of a pitch, but he missed his spot. He was setting up more away and reaching back inside again. The umpire, whether consciously or not, tougher to give that pitch when you cross up the catcher. 
Yeah. 3 2 pitch. Swain and a miss. Dixon goes down swinging. That's a huge out for Huffman. Now That's Francis a, Florentino steps into the batter's box. That's a big-time pitch from Huffman. Not out of the woods yet. Florentino looking for his second knock of the game. Had that back in the first. It's been a while. He had a fielder's choice and a strikeout sense, and it takes a big rip on that one. Didn't get anything to go. Huffman doing a really nice job of missing bats. Banned three of the last four guys he's faced. He's approaching nearly 60 pitches. That's a lot out of the pen. And you usually see that from guys who come in after their starter gets pulled early. Mm -hmm. But again, not having the traditional five-man rotation with about a seven-man bullpen, seven or eight-guy bullpen for that you'd see in the major leagues that you will see guys being asked to go three, four innings out of the pen and get the pitch count up high. You have to be flexible, have to be able to work out of different situations here in the U.S. PBL. Yeah, it's a different scheduling as well. No. Florentino <laughs> out to left center field, going back, and that one is out of here. A two-run blast by Francis Florentino, and it's a 4-1 ball game. What a moonshot by Florentino over that left center field fence. Over to Dave and Buster's sign. That was a thigh-high fastball that Florentino did not miss. Alex, if I wasn't even watching the game, if I was looking down playing on my phone or walking the concourse, I'd have just heard the crack of that bat and gone, yep, that's gone. That was a beautiful swing, and that's the, the crack of the bat that when you get into the cold days of December and January, you think about and you can't wait to hear again. That was a pretty, pretty swing from Florentino. Yeah, that's his second on the season. Both of them coming against the Unicorns. You know, in that first series, he went four for five, three extra base hits, including a home run. So he's been doing really well. And he's just pouring it on here early on in this season, continuing to prove why he's so talented here in this league and that was a heck of a swing i mean that went that went out almost to the shed in left field yeah it looks like we're going to have a pitching change for the unicorns we're going to step aside for a brief moment and we'll be back right here on the us pbl network jimmy john's field is the perfect venue for birthday parties summer picnics company outings and provides the best entertainment in Metro Detroit with great baseball all summer long. Spend your summer nights under the lights at Jimmy John's Field in historic downtown Utica. First State Bank is a locally owned and operated business. We're part of your community. At FSBCares.com, you'll find ways that we're making a difference by featuring locally owned and operated businesses, providing access to helpful financial resources, and engaging with community. FSBcares.com is part of our commitment to the neighborhood because strong neighbors mean stronger communities. Where good neighbors do great things. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. There are many things you can rely on in this world, like a sunny day brightening your mood, your mom baking the world's best apple pie, and never a dull moment in running your business. And when it comes to time-consuming HR tasks, you can rely on Tryon. Tryon can handle payroll and taxes, employee benefits, and more, so you can stay focused on attracting and retaining the best talent. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. Well, the Mammoths are excited right now after that two-run blast by Francis Florentino to give themselves some insurance up 4-1 to one over the Unicorns as it's going to be Matt Colucci from Amherst, New York going to take over the bump for Andrew Huffman who did really well with that mistake. Um, unfortunate there. 
Well, they, they were trying to extend him a little bit, and maybe just a bat or two long. Although Francis Florentino, you can make an argument, been the best hitter in the league through the first handful of weeks. Oh, that was just tough, you know, on that. And now down three. Colucci coming in. Four runs on six hits for the Woolly Mammoths. Oh, coming in, making his fifth appearance. Going to be throwing the third innings, four strikeouts, two walks. His last appearance came on Wednesday where he allowed a run against the Hoppers. Faces Nick Webb, who sends one out near the warning track and center, maybe a few feet above it. As that was a catch. Or the off second the bat, out of the inning. Off the bat, I thought he got a lot more of it than he did. I was waiting for Moses to keep going back, but never really threatened getting out of the park. Just got under it just a hair. Good play by Moses to just get the out. Duncan Hewitt now. A couple of walks for him, but he gets his second base hit with the rip of the bat. Coming out strong on the first pitch he sees from Colucci. That's all about taking advantage of opportunity. Hey, a random ball thrown hits Priyama Lazada in, in, in the ankle, and Duncan Hewitt has to DH. Gets on base four times, couple of walks, couple of singles. That's a very pretty swing. That is taking advantage of the opportunity presented to him. That has to make Taylor Jelenkowski very happy what he's seen from Duncan Hewitt tonight. You know, coming in, you know, Lozada has off to a good start, you know, but Hewitt you know, filling in the shoes and stepped it up really well. Two for two. He's got a couple of free passes as well, so having himself a great night. Alex Steinbach now almost. That one went above the head. So the Mammoths, we, this has been the theme we've been talking about all night, not just starting fast, but having some consistency. They've added on to the lead. The flip side of that's going to be in the bottom half of the inning, putting up another goose egg. 2-0 count. Big swing and a miss. I will mention. Odd to see someone like Steinbeck get blown away with the fastball on 2-0. and That's usually what you're sitting, dead red fastball, trying to turn on one, and he got exactly what you thought, and he was a bit late on it. Yeah, very friendly count. And now Gallucci trying to chase back into it, but he can't. Oh, and that's just huge for the Mammoths now. Going to be important thing is to try to hold on to this lead, especially late in the game. We'll see if they can do it. We'll have to wait and see. Another big rip by Steinbach to make a 3-2. and two. Not going to get a ton of favorable counts all game long. Sometimes they'll be behind in the count every at-bat. Get two good pitches in the at-bat. Like to do something, but they'll still have a chance here on 3-2. Payoff pitch coming, runner on the move. And he finds a hole. It's a left center. Hewitt going to third. The throw gets off the glove of Baggett. Advancing to second is Steinbach. Now two runners in scoring position for the Willie Mammoths with two outs here in the top half of the seventh. Steinbach was able to calibrate on the fastball. Puts it into left, and if you're Taylor Jelenkowski, the manager for the Mammoths, you're saying, guys, keep this going. Put it away now. Get another base hit. You go up 6-1. That's demoralizing for the Unicorns in the seventh. Get another couple runs. Go out. Put up a zero on the scoreboard. Right. Take down a team that's been playing pretty well. That would be really good if they could do it here. No. Up three is good, but if you can go up five, uh, it's just tough to come back from, especially at this point in the game. East Trahey trying to find his first base hit of the night, and it goes to the back. We'll get one on the wild pitch. It's now five to one, Woolly Mammoths. I don't know if. The pitch got crossed up or what, but Bisharat wasn't expecting it low and 
Never really went down to the block to try to keep it in front. Hit off his shin pad and deflected left. The Mammoths, the beneficiaries, getting a run across. That's not, that's not one you're going to put on the highlight reel. And he was trying to scoop it from below. And it just went to the backstop and didn't realize it until it was too late. So a three-run seventh inning. But the Willie may have now up four, trying to get at least one more to come through. And Trey, he is caught looking. Colucci, what a pitch to sit him down. But not before the Wally Mammoths get three, thanks to the two-run homer by Francis Florentino. And then the wild pitch to bring in another, where it's time to step aside for the seventh inning stretch, sponsored by Genesis Credit Union. We'll be back right here on the USPBL Network. Check your checking. If your account doesn't get you pumped, amped, or geeked, make the switch to Genius Checking from Genesis Credit Union. It's just genius. Bottom half of the seventh here in downtown Utica, the Woolly Mammoths. Are pulling away now, up five to one. Seth Beard gets back on the mound. He's got some work here now with his offense, giving him some insurance, and that was just huge for the Wally Mammoths to get some runs on the board, build on this lead. You know, up four. You think it's okay, but you still got a little bit of ways to go here. Well, the Mammoths, their bats did what they needed to do as they entered the late innings. Now it's time for their pitching and defense to do what they need to do. Keep the score at 5-1. to one. They flirted with danger the last couple of innings. They've been able to tightrope back to the dugout. Now let's try to get a, just a nice, calm inning. 2-3-4 here with Curiel, Gooden, and Pastor. Seth Beard. A couple of hits in the last inning. Unicorns trying to get the win on Meet the Unicorns night. A 1 1 count on him. A long time for Beard and he gets the time just before the pitch clock hit zero. It's actually Curiel that called time. Haven't had any pitch clock violations today. As, again, you looked at when they were implemented in the minor leagues, and the first month, the first handful of series, there was a pretty good amount of violation. By the end of the season, I believe they were down under one violation a game. Guys just got used to it. And, and it didn't take them overly long to do so. Yeah. A piece of it to stay alive for Curiel. And that's something that's been a lot of adjustments. You know, it's been a transition, not just in this league, but throughout baseball. And just got to be ready. You know, you hit. could argue that's one of the biggest changes baseball's had since they changed the height of the mound. Baseball doesn't change rules like this too often. 
Uh, Check Swain trying to pull. Maybe, I guess you could say the designated hitter was probably the last time they made a, a change this drastic, unless there's one I'm not thinking of. Baseball is usually the last to modernize and adjust. They, they like their tradition, and this is, well, I, I think a long time coming. I'm a big proponent of the pitch clock. It's going to get a new bat uh, for Curiel. You know, what, you know, we mentioned, though, this is a baseball. And keep, it one, keep it traditional. You no, know, the long games. You no, know, you don't have to worry about a clock. You know, right. That, you don't worry about the clock running out of time to, to score, but it, it get, a, get a nice rhythm to the game. I've never felt rushed with the pitch clock. A little chopper over to short. Good throw to able to get him in time. Good play by Denver Blend. Able to scoop it up, Nick Webb. I don't know, Alex, you can tell me if I'm off base, but with the pitch clock, I know some people have said at a live game you feel rushed, you don't have time to do anything. I don't feel like these games have been rushed. I feel like they have a decent pace, and I've never felt like, oh, my gosh, I can't write my scorebook, I can't do this, I can't grab my notes or anything. While it moves the game along, I don't feel like they're going, okay, get the ball back. Now you have to throw it right this second. Yeah, there's, they got some time. That's not going pitch at it like it's, you know, hurry, do this, do that, you know, have to throw a pitch in five seconds. No. You don't. You just don't, as a pitcher, you don't want to worry about that. You know, do want to lose your – I want to lose your focus. There's still time for the pitcher to get on there, take a deep breath, soak in the moment for a minute. In fact, I'd, st I'd say I don't have the official stats. This is just my own anecdotal evidence. I feel like the most pitch clock violations have come from the on-deck batter or the guy in the dugout taking the two-and-a-half-mile walk to home plate. Yeah, it is a long walk, you know, with the dugouts, you know, being far away. And they got to, like, sprint there. You got to, like, sprint to home play. That's the toughest part. Once you're in the batter's box, you're okay as long as you get back in by eight seconds. Well, that's what these guys are doing. Just got to get in there. 2-2 two -two pitch coming to Gooden. This guy's one foul. Gooden 0 for 2 tonight. It's been a change that a lot of people like, you know, you know speeding up the game. That goes to the backstop. One of the things I know, like, didn't have a clock, you know, kind of like similar to this, was uh, who wants to be a millionaire? You know, that guy, uh, you know, that game, that, you know, like in the old days, it didn't have, it didn't have a clock. People could take the time to I need, answer I a question. I clock. At that, that Trying then to it, answer some of those questions in 15 seconds is tough. No, then they brought it back for then they brought it for a couple of seasons. And what a good play by Denver Blinn. Wow. What a catch. That's going back on that one and robbing a base hit away from Gooden. Wow, man. Let's take a look back at the replay on that one. He, That's a tough play. You're going away from home plate. You're trying to track it over the shoulder. Like in football, the back shoulder throws, the receiver extends out. Blinn has to look back, reach over, get a little airborne to make that play. That is not an easy play. And not one shortstops have to do too often. It's not too often. It's, man, that, that's the, thir what, the third or fourth time we've seen a pitcher slip. Yeah, it, no. That was just a lot of ground. He wasn't really looking like he was getting it. His head was looking the other way, and it's like. Again, you see uh, on, on the mount here, that little bottom right, I believe, is where the issues have come. And there's a base hit for Nick Pastor. One drops in. That's his second on the evening. Yeah, so. Alec Brunson. University of St. Francis in Fort Wayne, Indiana grad. A two out base knock for Pastor and Seth Beard. 
to get back in control is a good pitch at 75 miles an hour. Good movement. Good stop by Beetle. One to one. At eighty-seven. So one one count. Check swing, call strike. That's one and two on Brunson. Beard. One pitch away from putting up that zero on the scoreboard. Make it five straight scoreless frames since giving up the run in the second. Swain in a mess. He gets the job done. Gets Brunson to go down swinging. And the Unicorns surround a two-out base knock by Nick Pastor. Do you believe with the lead that's the first strikeout of the game by Mammoth Pitching? Yep. And they got it done in the bottom half of the seventh. They're up 5-1 to one over the Utica Unicorns heading to the top of the eighth. We'll step aside and we'll be back here on the USPBL Network. Why are all these business owners smiling? Because they rely on Tryon to handle difficult and time-consuming HR tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and more. Working with one of the nation's top professional employer organizations provides access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans and Tryon's team of attorneys and HR experts. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. We're the financial champion of Michiganders. Whether you're a goal-getter or a dream chaser, an empty nester or up-and-comer, Anyone in Michigan can bank with us. Michigan Schools and Government Credit Union. Top of the eighth inning we go here at Jimmy John's Field in downtown Utica. It's a 5-1 game. The Mammoths up top over the Unicorns. Alex Johnson and Brady being with you for the call this evening. Matt Colucci back on the hill. No. No. Trying to keep the score where it is. Came in relief for Huffman. He allowed the home run to Florentino. It's going to be 8-9-1. For the Mully Mammoths, Beetle swings at the first pitch. Has some carry into right, almost near the warning track, Nick Pastor for the first down of the inning. That's a pretty good swing, taking it the opposite way. Gave it a drive. Opposite field power. I thought that one had a chance off the bat. That's the second one I've misjudged. So either ball's not carrying how I think it is tonight, or I just need to go, go to the eye doctor. With the night skies and you know, the calming down plays a factor you know, in the daylight or under the lights. It's Denver Blen who made that spectacular catch in the last half inning. Now hoping to get it going at the plate 0 for 3 today with a couple of punch outs. Trying to bring the defense into the batter's box. Kind of like a piece on that. It goes off the roofing and into the stands. That one was nearly at us. I don't think with this trajectory with the net and the way we're set up, I don't think we could ever get a foul ball right back at us. Uh, it's not looking like it, and it would be really tough. Oh, pulling the other way, and it drops in. There's the first hit for Denver Blinn. He's got to be happy about that. Well, when you start feeling... Feeling good about yourselves, everything starts going better for you. Make a play in the field. Hey, now you get a hit on the at the plate, taking it the opposite way, doing a nice job. 
starting to get a little bit of, of mojo going, a little bit of swagger out there. There's a fan with the, the ball. Got a souvenir. You know, he'll remember. Always good, you know, to get a baseball and feel pretty good about yourself. You know, back to the top of the order with Hacklin. And he finds it into left between third and short. Now the Woolly Man was trying to add some more. Hacklin settled in nicely after the first three at-bats. Didn't do much with it. Worked a long at-bat a walk. Last time this at-bat gets his first hit of the night. And the Mammoths trying to bury the Unicorns here in the eighth. Up four. Trying to add on some more. The man to do it, Burl Dixon. Him and Florentino. Oh, Dixon. That hit him, too? Yeah, he was on a half swing. I think it hit him in the back leg, but since he broke the plane, that is, that is well, about as literally as adding insult to injury as you can get. It's strike one, and you take a ball off the oh, leg. Oh, man. That's tough. No. Couldn't hold up, so... Foul. And then he, oh, he hits one off his other leg. Yeah, man. This is not what Dixon wanted. No. Man, that's uh so you've taken two balls, one off each of the leg, and you're down in the count 0-2. Uh, yeah, that's um that's a pretty rough at bat. Oh, he's looked to, looking to make it up for it here. Bet you those legs won't hurt if he if he puts one in the gap. That's what he's trying to do. Oh wow, man! Where did that one miss? Ooh. That looked like a pretty good pitch belt high on the inner third of the plate. Yeah, Colucci wanted that one too, and he's shaking his head. He thought that was strike three. There we go. At 64 miles an hour, sits down Dixon. He knew it, too. That slow movement on that pitch. But now he has to face Florentino. Send one over the left center field wall for a two-run homer in his last at bat. Right down the heart of the plate at 76. Runners on first and second. You can't really pitch around Florentino in this spot. You have to go right at him. Yeah, that's a tough part for Colucci. It'll be tough to make him chase something away. As Colucci gets set. The pitch clock at seven. Up the middle on one hop, Curiel. They'll get the force at second. Good play by Norgren as Hacklin's out. And the Mammoths are retired. They strand two, but they're still up four over the Unicorns as we head to the bottom half of the eighth. We're back on the USPBL Network.
Bottom half of the eighth. 5-1 Mammoth's advantage over the Unicorns as Seth Beard gets back on the mound. Alex Johnson and Brady Beating here with you for the call this evening. I want to thank everyone for tuning in tonight on Facebook and YouTube. Of course, we're on this Friday night action here tonight. Kyle Bischoff is tuning in tonight from Fort Myers, Florida. He was signed by the Twins organization a week ago. And former Mammoth checking in on his old team. He has to like what he's seeing down there. Him and Jake Wazinski, part of the Twins FCL rookie ball team down there. And while well, his his buddy Wazinski got, got the win the other day in his first professional or well, his first minor league appearance. Yeah, congratulations to him and especially for those two guys who get signed by the Twins and their farm system and getting ready to get through their minor league career and try to work their way up to the major leagues. Another chapter in the, the book of success stories that the USPBL has produced. And I've seen a lot of guys, especially from the Twins, have gotten signed. and Pretty good relationship here. And I, w and I feel pretty lucky that I got to see Wozinski versus Bischoff on opening day. That one flared into shallow center. Dixon comes in to make, to make the catch. And that'd be something to see, you know, both of those guys, you know, coming through here. Uh, playing in the same league and then get signed by the same team and their farm system. So within a week yeah. of each other, that's okay. got to make the transition a little easier. At least knowing one person who's down there, a little bit of familiarity. Yeah, it's a little bit different if you're coming in not knowing anybody. You no, know, having somebody you know from the league, you no, know, he didn't play right with him, but you no. Know, it's like any job. Start somewhere new. It's whether you're confident or not. It's it's always a little. Just nerve-wracking, trying to get the, the lay of the land at a, at a new gig. Guys know it's, you know it's a lot for them. You know, it takes a lot of work you know, to get to this point in their career. You know, they work down at you know, high school to college, you know, here, and then summer ball, and all this hard work and paying off. As Moses is ahead of the count 3-0. and oh. Beard, getting set. Have a piece of that one. Don't really see guys swing at 3-0. Uh, I thought it was an interesting approach, 3-0. Maybe thought he was going to get a pitch. Down 5-1. He likes some base runners, but I. But depending on who you are in the lineup, the relationship you have with the manager, you get 3-0, get a pitch you like, you can make him pay. Which... The the whole, especially, and not in this situation, but the, the situation a couple years back where Fernando Tatis hit a home run up like seven runs on a 3-0 pitch. Hey, if it's 3-0 and they groove it, go ahead, try to spin it back and put it in, put it in yeah. the stands. 3-2 yeah, now. He's continuing to work at it. Oh, they need some base runners, you know, especially in the point of the game, the, the run situation, you know, kind of different for any circumstance. But if you're the Unicorns right now, you're down to your last five outs. Need to get guys on. Did he go? They're going to appeal. No, he did not. So he will go to first base. That was oh so close, but Moses stays alive. Don't need to get all four runs back in this half inning. Just chip into the lead. Hey, get make it 5-3 or make it 5-2, 5-3. Give yourselves a little bit of a more manageable ninth inning. That should be the goal right now for the Unicorn. I went up and in on Bisharat. It came in for Justin Gomez. Good movement and moving in on that pitch at 77 miles an hour. No one warming up in the Mammoth's bullpen. This is Seth Beard's at least his inning. Depending on how it goes, they might let him try to finish out the game. Hey, I got a piece of it off. 
Bottom part of the bat. Bisharad annoyed. You never like to get a foul ball on a check swing. And that one wasn't even close to breaking the plane. Difference between a 2-1 count and a 1-2. A little bit of action in the unicorn side. I've seen who that is. I think it's Garrett Bonnet. We'll see if he comes out for the ninth. 1-2 pitch. Good stop by Beetle. That was going to go to the back. Counts even at two. And a single back of the sixth. From Pleasant Grove, Alabama. One goes out of play. And it looked like off the screen, yes. Yeah. So I was trying to see. As Nick Webb was thought he was going to have some real estate, but he did not. It went off the screen, so Bisharat's still alive. Made the catch. That's out in wiffle ball rules. Catch it off the garage. Still counts, but yeah. fortunately for Beard, hit the screen, so he has to throw at least one more pitch to him. Now 2-2 pitch, and it rings him up. Strike three. Bisharat. Doesn't like it. I don't know what Bisharat didn't like about it. That's a pretty good pitch. That's outer third of the plate belt high. That's one you can't take. And it's working away, so it's in the zone the whole time. And even at the end, it looked like it was still over the plate. Bisharat didn't like it. Oh, I don't know about you, Alex. I thought that was a pretty good pitch. Yeah, I thought it was too. Oh, had good movement. We can just look back out in here. It's Patrick Baggett. Steps in. Hey, okay. not like that call, but got to move on. It's bad. Good. Sends that one foul to the Mammoth stuck out. Going to be the Hoppers and the Beavers tomorrow for a double header. And then the Unicorns and the Mammoths will be back here on Sunday. Let's take a look at it for next couple of games coming up on the USPBL network. We're approaching the middle part of June. That time of year where the kids are already out of school or finishing up school next week. I'm going to be spending a lot of time here at the ballpark. Broken bat on Baggett. Into shallow center. Earl Dixon coming in and making another put out. He's done a lot of work out there in center. I believe that's seven put outs for him on the night. Impressive for him doing all the work. And it's a 5-1 man's advantage. So as we head to the ninth, we'll be back after this right here on the USPBL Network. The Dave & Buster's Method is designed to help you unlearn adulthood and discover the funner you hidden within you. The you that doesn't think about adult things and stuff. Ashley, I don't want to hear anything about your car registration when we're at Dave & Buster's. Okay. The you. You want to be. Let the Dave & Buster's Method illuminate you. Begin the method today with five free games. You know you want to. We're for people, the pioneers, the underdogs, the players, and the slow and steadies. We're for people, for who they are and who they could become. Yes, we're a bank, and some say our business is all about money, but that's an old idea. Because look past the money, and you'll see real human lives. We see it, because we're for people. Huntington, welcome.
We've got a new pitcher for the Unicorns to start the top half of the ninth. Garrett Bonnet takes the hill. Coming in at 5'9", 205 from Rockport, West Virginia. As he's trying to keep this a 5-1 game. The Unicorns down right now. We're going to see what he has to offer here, Brady. Hey, you, you look at, at Bonnet, and again, like you said, his job, keep it right where it's at. Bonnet, just a three-pitch mix. The four-seam fastball, a slider, and a splitter. So keeps it pretty simple. One that goes straight, one that goes, dot, or goes horizontally, and one that drops vertically. And we'll see what he can do. He's going to face the 4-5-6, the middle heart of the order. Webb, Hewitt, and Steinbach. And Nick Webb put a pretty good charge into one. Just left it a bit short of the fence in right center. Looking for a similar swing, but if he squares, squares it up, instead of it being an out, it's uh, going to be out of the park. I'm going to pour it on here. Five runs, ten hits, and an error for the Woolly Mammoths. One run, eight hits, no errors for the Unicorns here tonight. One zero count on Webb. Ups high at 88 miles an hour. Comes from LSU Shreveport NAIA school. He appeared in three games for them this season. Also spent his collegiate career in his early years at Ohio Valley University in Division Two in the GMAC. Now the same division as some of the other some Michigan schools around here, Hillsdale and Northwood. He's down in the count three and zero to Webb. Ooh. This them up high. Coming out in. of the pen, you never want to walk a guy, especially on four straight pitches. You want to be trusted as a late inning guy. You want to be a guy that they hand the ball to in, in tough situations. You have to come in and you have to throw strikes. Now you put a man on base and Duncan Hewitt's coming up and he's probably been the most consistent bat tonight. Reached on all four plate appearances. The OBP is going to love that for Duncan. Absolutely. Let's see. He can go five for five on, on base. You know. Five straight misses for Bonnet now. And Bisharat's going to talk over with him just to calm him down. And Friday Night Fireworks, you know, after the game, presented by Magna. Every Friday night at Jimmy John's Field, fireworks light up the sky. All the fans will be happy for that. And then there will be kids run the bases before that, before the fireworks show. But a good turnout here tonight. Fans coming out. Here in the top of the ninth. Up high, 2 0. Oh. Six straight. That is Mr. Strike Zone. Now the 2 0 oh pitch coming. There's the first strike. Swing and a miss. Still need to be patient if you're mammoth batters. Six misses to one strike in the zone. Be ready for maybe another try and get me over pitch. Uh, so there, it was going down, but Hewitt went after it. Two and two. He knew it too. He barely broke the plane. Bailed Bonnet out there. Taking his time. He has 13 seconds to work with. Getting ready to set. Trying to get the sign. And he throws. And he gets back and strikes out Hewitt. 
That's a pretty good pitch by Bonnet. Finds that low outside corner. Bisharat sold it as well, but I didn't even think that was a pitch that needed any framing. I thought he picked the corner pretty well. He's able to retire Hewitt after getting down in the count. Steinbach got a base hit this last time up. He's one for four. A guy that was trying to pick things up you know, in the early part of the season. He came in batting just 217. And had an 0 for 3 night last night, but looking to get another base hit here. Sees that one go above him. And in the early part of the season, you guys want to figure out where you guys, where they are at. But like you said, so a lot of time to make adjustments and improve. Well, in one regard, baseball is a long game. It takes a lot of time to really get a feel for what a hitter is. Again, at the major league level, about 500 at bat. But here in Utica, you're two months in and you might have 75 to 100 at bats, and that's a good portion of the season. These managers have to make decisions based on very small sample sizes. Holes one to right. But Nick Pastor makes the catch for out number two. He was under that one. Reese Trahey, 0 for 3 here tonight. And like you mentioned, Oldis, they don't get a lot of sample sizes. No, he's another guy. No, coming in 0 for 3. He came in batting 231. He's made some good plays, you know, in the early part of the season. Oh, it just takes some time, you know. Got to be patient. Oh, early on in the season, you try to do too much to impress people, and popped up in the infield. Gooden calling everybody off. Gets underneath and makes the catch. Last chance for the unicorns in the bottom of the knife. Down four. We'll see what happens when you come back on the USPBL Network. At Ascension Michigan, we're committed to being your first choice for healthcare. Our nationally recognized heart program is the leader throughout Michigan in minimally invasive heart valve procedures. For joint replacement, spine, and cancer care, patients choose our specialists for advanced care and treatment. And we also excel in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. How do these business owners find the time for peace of mind? Because they rely on Tryon to handle difficult and time-consuming HR tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and more. Working with Tryon, one of the nation's top professional employer organizations, provides access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans and its team of attorneys and HR experts. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. What makes Detroit Mercy so unique is the fact that it's in the middle of Detroit, and especially with their service learning programs, you really get a chance to be a part of the community. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. Bottom of the ninth we go. Bo Atkins is going to look to close this one out for the Mammoths. Up 5-1 to one here in the bottom of the ninth as they look to snap their three-game losing streak, just three outs away from doing so. He's going to Not technically a safe situation for Atkins, but you want to work quickly. You don't want to give the Unicorns any life. One, because, well, 
You want to snap this losing streak. Do a good job uh, of keeping the runs off the board. Gave up one in the second. And two, if you keep it under 20-some pitches, might be available for, for Sunday's game when we run this matchup back. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting rematch. You know, we'll see what the Unicorns can do here with these last three outs. But if they're able to get back, you no, know, they only pulled off that one run in the second inning. And that was on that pitch hit RBI single by Lara. We got some action tomorrow, the Hoppers and the Beavers for two. And then back here on Sunday when these two teams rematch. Looking at it for Bo Atkins from Riverton, Illinois. His last outing was Tuesday, where he went two innings, bought a couple hits, and struck out four in their game against the Beavers. Well, name of the game right now for the Unicorns, base runners. Just get guys on base. Try to just pass to the next guy. Give yourself an opportunity. You want to get to a point where the game-tying run comes up to the plate. It's going to be Lara, Curiel, and Gooden here in the bottom of the ninth. Some fans getting ready to run the bases after this game ends, and then the fireworks show. Playing in a mess. Interestingly enough, there it looks like they're playing Lar to go the other way. He is, and that one is going to just drop foul. Ooh. That was close. That was hard to, from up here, I thought it caught chalk, but there's a reason why the umpire's right down the first baseline. He pretty confidently put his hands up and called foul right down that line. But if, if we can get a look at the entire outfield, you see Burl Dixon shaded to the right. They're actually playing the righty Lara to take it the opposite way. Yeah, that's what he did, you know. You know kind of limited what you can do now, you know, with the rules in place. The outfield's still unaffected. The infield, you're right, it, it's very much limited. But the outfield, hey, you can do whatever you want. It's the Wild West out there. There's no restriction to those three guys. And you can have everyone out there on one side. Well, it would just be difficult if someone pulled the opposite way, and you're all the way out in left field, and you have to charge, you know, so much ground. There's that left center field gap you can see. Bounces in the dirt off the knee pad of Beetle. Goes behind him. Count is three and two on Lara. Payoff pitch coming. Pulls it again. And that will stay fair this time. Lead off single for Lara. Donovan Curiel. They need more base runners. Action already in the west side bullpen. Looks like it's Tyler Richley getting ready just in case things get a little too hairy for Taylor Jelenkowski's like. Up four to don't want to make things interesting. If you're the mammoths, Curiel took a big swing. Fastball was humming in there. At eighty seven miles an hour. Ooh, it felt I don't know. Up here it felt like it uh it got in on, on Curiel in a hurry. One count. See what he does here. 
Atkins taking his time. O2 pitch coming. Check swing. And looks like he held up. He did. I don't think he crossed the plane when umpires agree he did not. So, 1 2. Atkins trying to get something low in the zone, get him to put something on the ground and eliminate that leadoff single with two ball. 1 2 pitch coming. Over the head of Webb. One past the right field line. Two runners on. That was not hit hard at all. That was hit the perfect spot. If Webb is inch taller, has an inch longer arm, that could have been a double play. But instead, the Unicorns in business. Two runners on. Still nobody out now. That tying run out of the dugout. Still in the on-deck circle, but getting closer to the plate. That's the 10th base hit by the Unicorns. Only have brought in just one. They haven't had a lot of multi-hit innings. And if they have, they've all been singles. I don't believe, looking over my scorebook, unless I miswrote something, there hasn't been an extra base hit for I the Unicorns I, yet I agree. Today. There hasn't been one. So you get 10 hits, but if they're all singles, that's a lot harder to, to, to push a run across. That's why... The, the modern look at, at a batter is how much power do they have? What's their slugging? How many extra base hit? Because singles, you probably need two, at least two or three to push across a run. Hey, you go double, double, just need a couple or a single and then a double. You can score the guy from first. Well, extra base hits, there's a reason why just going away from average when you look at a, a ball player. Beetle prevents the runners from advancing. So another stop, and actually they haven't had that huge hit, that extra base hit. 2-1 count. You want a chance to put yourself in a position here. you got nobody out. you just got to be very cautious in how you approach these batters. And then how do you, and if you're in the hitter, you know, just don't, don't force out a pitch, you know, that's outside or or going to be a ball. You just got to be really careful here if you're the Unicorns. As he looks at strike two at 85 miles an hour on the outside corner. But a good evening here tonight. But the Unicorns are rallying. Looking to stay alive. Runners on first and second. Nobody out. They're down four. Trying to bring the tying run to the plate. Pulls one down the right field line, but that one goes way out near the wiffle ball area. Gooden straightens that one out. All of a sudden, you're down a run. With the tying run at the plate, still nobody out. Atkins desperately in need of out number one. Just gets something to calm it down. Takes a look at second. He throws. Miss upstairs, and he's run the count full. Man, it's got to be thinking about. They have, yeah, they have Richley ready. This could be the last batter, the way Richley's acting in the pen. Payoff pitch coming. Called strike three. Outside corner. Gooden is caught looking, and that's a huge out. That is a big, big pitch, a borderline call. That, that's 50-50, and, well, if it goes the Unicorns' way, now you have bases loaded instead. A little bit of momentum slowing down for the Unicorns up to Nick Pastor as that tie and run still in the on-deck circle. Got to keep it going here. Side part of the plate 0 and one Pastor, two for four. Infield single, a ground out, 
a fly out, and a single to left. Atkins to his motion. Looks over, pitching from the stretch. Way outside, one and one. So slipped out of his hand. That's uh, That would have been behind a righty. Losing his movement there. We've seen that a few times here this evening. One and one. One foul down the middle at 88 miles an hour. It would be Brunson next. First and second one out. Unicorns need to rally to keep the game going. Lost his bat. Ooh. Don't see that every day. It didn't break, you know. It just, you know, he swung and just, just let it fly. Sometimes the guys that have the one hand follow through, you see that more off, uh, a little more often, but not a foul ball too. Usually, it's the the check swing they're trying to hold up, and it slips out of the hand. Not on the, not on a foul ball like that. Yeah, no, I haven't seen that before, but. Atkins it drops in the dirt. Two balls and two strikes. Unicorns only one run, and that was in the second inning. Haven't produced much well, besides the 10 hits. Atkins in his windup. Foul again. He knows with one away, he's one good pitch away from ending the game and breaking this losing streak. Past Storr just trying to find a way on any way he can, battling in the box. Get that tying run to the plate. It's tough for both sides. Who wants it more? 2-2 two -two pitch coming. Swing and a miss. Past Storr goes down swinging. And the Unicorns are down to their final out. It's up to Alec Brunson. Who's one for four tonight. Twenty-six pitches for Atkins. He's gotten into some early trouble. Back-to-back -back punch outs. Wayne in the mess. You can pitch aggressively here. Even if you give up the home run, you still are up a run. You can attack Brunson. Waiting a miss. Now down to their final strike. Or the Unicorns. Exactly what he's doing. Had him swing in through a, a curveball low and away. Bust him up and in with the fastball. Even get him to swing through something up high. Maybe even get that high and inside corner. Atkins thinking what he wants to do. 0-2 pitch. That one missed. A little bit downstairs, one and two. Gone low with two straight off speeds. See if you want to go back with the fastball or keep giving him a dose of the small stuff. Let's see what he does. Oh, he's been doing good at it. First and second, if the unicorns can keep it alive. And a swing and a miss. Brunson goes down swinging. Atkins strikes out the side. And the Mammoths snap their three-game losing streak and pick up a 5-1 victory over the first-place Unicorns. And that's exactly what the Mammoths needed to do. Get off to an early lead. The Unicorns bounce back. There were a few times you are thinking, uh-oh, here it goes again. The Unicorns are going to get it going. They did not. The Mammoths come back or hold on to the lead. And that, and that home run from Francis Florentino, man, that was one of the prettiest swings we've seen all year. Yeah, it's been a good night for the Mammoths. They pick up a 5-1 victory back in the win column. The Unicorns drop to 5-3. and three. The Mammoths improve to 4-6. and six. And both of these teams will rematch on Sunday, on Sunday afternoon. Going to be a good one in store. And we'll see how both teams respond, you know, after that game. Well, the Mammoths... 
pick up the victory 5-1 to one over the Utica Unicorns. And both of these teams will be back in action on Sunday for a rematch beginning at 1.05 p.m. Well, fans are about to get ready to watch the fireworks in a few minutes. And now we're going to send it down. Or this, as they're getting it ready. It looks like Francis Florentino will be the player of the game. And, well, Priamo Lozada, he's been the, basically the translator for Florentino, helping uh, Coach Taylor Jelenkowski communicate. And, well, Florentino, I I'm curious to hear what he has to say because he's been doing really well to start off the year. And, again, that was a beautiful swing on that home run. Absolutely. We're going to send it now down to Kara Wolfbauer for our player of the game presented by the University of Detroit Mercy. Thanks, Johnny. I am here with our CNS our player of the game. Can you guys hear me? There we go. Sorry, guys. I'm here with my CNS Healthcare player of the game, Francis Florentino from the Dominican Republic. He had an awesome home run today. We have Priamo here to help us uh, translate. So, Francis, what's it been like coming to America and playing with so many different cultures? Bien, bien. Gracias a Dios. Es una buena experiencia. Um, it's good. Uh, he said it's a blessing playing with players from all over the place. Well, so far this season, even while I've been running throughout the stands and doing different segments, I've had multiple fans purposely point out Francis. So what's it like knowing that you've only been here a short time with the league and you've made a big impact on the fans so far? Porque se siente bien. He venido haciendo un buen trabajo. So, jugar pelota, yo lo amo eso y lo juego con pasión. He says that that means I'm doing the right thing and I just love baseball and I love being out here. Well, thank you guys so much. It's awesome talking to both of you. Thank you, Francis. Thank you, Priamo. Thank you, everybody. Please enjoy the fireworks tonight and we'll see you tomorrow for our Double Header Saturday. I'm Carol Wolfbauer. Thank you, everybody up in the booth. Thanks, Johnny. Uh, thanks, Alex. Thanks, Brady. Thanks, everybody. And we'll see you tomorrow at Jimmy John's Field. So 5-1 victory for the Mammoths over the Utica Unicorns here tonight. And Brady, what are your closing thoughts on this game? thought Alex Manassa did a really nice job after a, a rough first couple of innings. Did exactly what the Mammoths needed him to do. Went long. Seth Beard picked up the torch. Did not let down at all. And Bo Atkins gave up a couple singles to start, but striking out the side. Pitching went well. A little bit of timely hitting. It's a nice win for the Mammoths. Unicorns going to need to figure just Hey, starting off pretty well, they're going to be ready for the rematch Sunday, but that was a well-played game by the Mammoths. Have to like the improvement of your Taylor Jelenkowski. Yeah, absolutely. Our final score here tonight is the West Side Willie Mammoths 5 and the Utica Unicorns 1. On behalf of everyone here at the USPBL Network, on behalf of Kira Wolfbauer, my partner, Brady Beaton, I'm Alex Johnson. Thank you for tuning in to tonight's game. We'll be back tomorrow for a doubleheader between the East Side Diamond Hoppers and the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers right here on the USPBL Network. Have a good night, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.